Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and welcome back to the bar. Have you been stung by a bee in your life? Once? Twice? Three times? Many more? Or perhaps none at all? No matter what your case may be, perhaps you have an interest in the stingable kind, whether that be wasps, whether that be bees, whether that be bumbles, whether that be... B. I, I think I should just leave the statement there. It's a pun. It's funny for some, it seems. I have had a recent interest in using honey in cocktails, specifically some raw unfiltered honey that we've had laying around. I also have this really, really cool, like, little honey stirrer thing that I'm probably not going to use on stream, but my god, I like looking at it because it's made of, like, crystal. Um, in any case, that's the topic of conversation tonight. It's the bees and the knees. Your bees, my knees, or perhaps your knees and my bees. It really, it really doesn't matter. It's whatever we want. Let's go. Let's go, dude. Where's my party horns? <laughs> Let's go. That didn't make a... There's the satisfying sound effect. I love this. In any case, that's what the topic of conversation is tonight. I was without a cocktail idea about 24 hours ago before the stream started. I'm still trying to figure things out. The workflow is, it's, it's getting there. Uh, it's slowly but surely getting there, I assure you of that. And so I was like, dearest, I need an idea. And she's like, well, let's make some cocktails based off of the board games that we have in the house. Loosely related to the conversation of bees knees that we're having tonight is this awesome board game totally unsponsored Just a really really cool game called bears and bees It's where you take like these little hexagons and you put them together in ways such that the mat the um That the colors on the sides of them match each other. It's very very fun Maybe I'll play it sometime and and I really like to play board games and whatnot I'm still trying to figure out the right angles and like method with which I want to stream board games and stuff It's a far off topic of conversation if there's enough interest I will do what whatever is in my means to be able to provide for the good people of this world But I'm not a suck up and neither are you so I'm gonna put this off to the side of the gear. I don't even need it there we go. I just wanted to mention that because it's a really awesome board game. Loose related to the game to the to the name of the bees and the knees is the fact that I have wanted to like experiment with different infusions of uh, and by infusions I mean you take a particular object, a particular botanical, whether that be a spice or a flower or We'll get there, that's the point of the stream. And you take it and you put it inside of something else to allow that something else, the solvent in this case, to be able to rip all the goodness from the inside and become one solvent, solute, combined together. Think of it kind of like salt, but not quite. Instead of dissolving completely, it just kind of takes most of it. You may be familiar with cucumber water. You may be familiar with ice water. Two very different things. One's an infusion. Can you guess which one? It's, it's probably it's probably the the cucumber water one but essentially you, water is an excellent solvent and it's really really good at having nothing in it relatively speaking and because it has relatively nothing in it and the cucumber in this case has relatively a lot in it something wonderful called osmosis happens where essentially the area of high concentration moves toward to create an equilibrium with the area of low concentration which is science speaks for saying imagine a glass that is half full and a glass that is, well, let's say a glass that's, ha that's full and a glass that's empty. If I pop a hole between the two of them and they're right next to each other, eventually one is going to get lower and one's going to get higher until they match at about the same. That's pretty much the process that we're talking about here. An excellent solvent in this case is something called alcohol. Specifically, alcohol that you find in your vodkas and your bourbons and the things that you put into your body which is slowly poisoning you. But by goodness, humanity just seems to love this stuff. And it's really, really good at having relatively nothing in it. It's an excellent solvent. So essentially, you take the alcohol of your choice, you put something, the solute, into it, and it rips all the goodness out of it to create something totally, entirely new. Now, the topic of conversation is the bees and the knees. What is a bee's knees? Well, loosely speaking, I got a recipe from this book called The Power of Positive Drinking. It's, um, it's a coloring book for cocktails, and it has cocktail recipes. I have not colored in a single page of this book. It is completely and utterly empty, um, just because I, have, I, I don't have enough time to be able to go through and do this. Uh, I'd rather be drawing on my board back here. It's, there's no lines that I have to stay within. It's freeform, man. It's like jazz the good kind of jazz and in the somewhere in this book there is a recipe that calls for the bee's knees uh, i'm not going to look in the book because i can't remember what page it's on and the bookmark points to the wrong location however i have it up over here the bee's knees according to this book is two ounces or 60 milliliters of gin three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of uh, lemon juice three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of honey or honey syrup they say honey syrup just kind of depends on what kind of viscosity you want out of your drink and then you top it off with a lemon twist and you give it a shake 
put in your container, and it's a lovely cocktail. It takes the sweetness of honey and adds the, the sourness of your citrus, in this case, your lemon, and combines it with that kind of floral, botanical nature of a gin. These, this is just a general cocktail that you can make you can, apparently you can make a bee's knees with bourbon you can make it with pretty much any spirit that you want to mixology is a very loose set of rules um some would call them guidelines that's a movie reference i think it's the pirates of the caribbean um but i don't i don't watch a lot of flicks these days actually i do and they're on netflix so that was a lie and why would i lie to the people in any case so the bee's knees is essentially what we've got inspired here now that concept of solvents and solute coming together to create something wonderful has a special place in my heart for the bee's knees because there is a particular gin out there that has eluded me for the past few years or so i can't seem to find it anywhere around me i might be blind i might be looking in the wrong places that or i wasn't actually looking for it at all and that was also a lie which i shouldn't be doing to you people it's something called empress gin empress gin is gin that is really really purple it's got a really really bold purple color to it um some would call it blue some would call it purple i would call it purple um let's just that's just where my eyes are at. Um, and so the reason, the, the way that they do that is they take the gin um, with their whatever botanicals they made to use it, probably juniper and a bunch of other things that is probably proprietary, and they infuse something else into it. In this case, for I, I'm pretty sure for Empress Gin, the majority is going to be something called Butterfly Pea Flower. It's a flower, and it's a very, very blue flower. And if you take the butterfly flea, butterfly pea flower petals and you put them into gin or literally any other alcohol out there, the characteristics of the butterfly pea flower will begin to be ripped out of itself and put into the liquid around it, turning it a lovely, lovely shade of purple. Not sure what that does to bourbon. That's not the topic of tonight's episode. So that's an exploration for another time. But so what I decided to do over the course of the night was explore that inspiration I had. You take the game, you go to the honeycombs. You go from the honeycombs, you go to the honey. You go from the honey, you go to the bee, you go to the bee, you go to the knee, you go to the bee's knees, you go to the gin, you go to the gin, you go to the um, botanicals, the butterfly pea flower, butterfly pea, power, pea flower tea, tea. What other kind of teas could we use? And that's my long-winded intro of saying, I'm going to make six different bee's knees tonight, all with different infusions of gin. Technically, one is a technicality. I use butterfly pea flower twice, so please don't get me on that. It's the, whoa, that side, the blue one and the purple one both use that. I'll provide all the recipes in the description of videos. I'm going to put it on Instagram. Who knows where the hell these recipes will end up. Every single one of them, except for the purple one, is an original. So you're welcome. The purple one, just because it's just, it's just a bee's knees. I made my own Empress Gin, and I, I totally pirated it. I can't take credit for that. That would be lying to you people again. That's not the theme of the episode. When a bee stings you, they are honest about it. They say, I'm going to screw you up. And they do. And it hurts. Let's get things started, shall we? The first cocktail that we have on our list is a blue bee's knees, which I've decided to name Bee and the Bear. Whoa, never mind. It's called Bear and the Bee Blue Flower, which... Is, it's reminiscent of a show called Bear the Big Blue House, which Anna absolutely loves. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out some gin that I've prepared. I've got here my own infused butterfly pea flower gin, and it's a wonderful, wonderful shade of purple. And don't worry, I'm gonna get you with that. I'm gonna get you with that close up here in just a moment because this is really, really cool to look at. It started off as kind of blue, and then it became a lot more deep blue over time. Eventually, the longer that I kept it sitting there, it turned in this awesome purple. I'm not sure if the color is coming up too good, at least at this angle, but I'm gonna put a flashlight to the back of it. Uh, not gonna blind the people of the world and see what other color that shows. You can kind of see if my hand's not in the way. Hold up a second. It's kind of purple back there. I've got my, uh, I got a tea bag still in it, so it's still technically infusing, but it looks so cool. And to be perfectly honest, I have no idea what it tastes like um, because I haven't tried pretty much any of these aside from the kind of experimentation that I was doing with like colors and stuff last night. I didn't taste anything. I just kind of put it in a cup and, sit, and saw, tried to figure out what color it would be. Um, so that's the purple flower, the, the, the pop. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna go get some water. I actually don't have any water with me today. Right in front of the camera, actually. Here we go. Hydrate. Hydrate, folks. Um, or you'll be throwing up in your mouth like I did last week. It's got nothing to do with talking and stuff like that. It's uh, just my body doing what my body do. And what my body like to do is throw up in its mouth. It's a, it's a beautiful thing called life. I need a coaster for this guy. There we go. There we go. Oh, it's kind of bent. Woo! My coaster's bent. I don't think I did that. That wasn't my fault, but it's at my bar, so technically I have to take responsibility for it. So the bear and the big blue, the bear and the bear, the bear and the bee 
blue flower is created with a base of this butterfly pea flower gin, which you can easily, so, so easily make for yourself. I tend to str I tended to stray away from infusions for a while because I was like, hey, you know, I'm gonna make a certain amount of this infused spirit and I don't know what recipes I'm gonna use it in and what if I goes to waste and what if I run out of containers? Well, we live in a world of plenty for those who can afford it. Luckily we can. And I happen to find, actually, well, I didn't even go out and buy bottles. I just had a bunch of these like jars. Every single jar that comes up here is gonna be completely different because I'm a hoarder, I'm a scrounger, and some would say that's a very good thing in the engineering field. And it's definitely gonna go on my LinkedIn and resume. Um, shortly after this stream and in any case you just take your butterfly pea flower which kind of looks like i had this whole bag of it dude it was awesome i went to a renaissance fair a couple of weeks ago it was wonderful i saw a man sharing wildly inappropriate poetry uh and i went to a botanical shop which was a, a quote run by a druid um and so they had on sale this butterfly pea flower i would love to zoom in on that to give you all a look of what this oh i'm making a mess <laughs> I'm making a small mess here. In any case, but what they had on display was they had this butterfly pea flower in, in a container, and you could buy it for, like, I think it was, like, $15 or so. But the problem is, like, I was like, there's no way that I'm going to spend this much money on something like this, which I feel like I can get off of Amazon. And lo and behold, I did an Amazon search, and I was able to find that the butterfly pea flower that you can buy on Amazon is it's relatively affordable. Like, you can, you can buy it for, I think, a dollar to two dollars an hour? I think um, but back in the in the in the back of the store the druid hut if you will there was actually a, a, an entire area where you could like purchase and procure like raw botanicals and raw like things um, and a part of that was an entire container of butterfly pea flower and I pretty much took the rest of it I was like hey can I get some of that stuff in the back? And I'm like, what do you want from him? I was like, I want the blue stuff. And like, we can give you the blue stuff. I was like, thanks so much for giving me the blue stuff. So I got the blue stuff. And I was thinking like, I'm just gonna keep this for the moment that I require it. And the time finally came where I just decided that I was going to acquire it. Um, so when you want to do your own infusions, all you need to do is acquire your solute, uh, get some sort of solvent. In this case, I used the rest of the gin that I have. There was no more gin left in this container. It was about filled up to here before uh, I started planning last night, but um, I can buy cheap stuff. Oh, there's actually a little bit left in there. Mmm. I love me a nice watered-down gin and tonic. A little bit of, wa little bit of water. Lots and lots of gin. In any case, that gin bottle is gone. It's going to be very much used. But, like, I, for one, stray, stray, stave away from trying to be, like, wasteful and stuff. So now I'm going to have various different infused gins and stuff. And we'll probably sub them in and out for my own personal cocktails. Unless I figure out some cool flavor combinations. We did do a little bit of research in over the course of the, uh, over the, course of the evening. It was a very busy evening, a very fun evening. But we were keeping ourselves busy. So for this one, for the bear in the bee blue flower, I decided to look up what kind of flavor combinations go really really well with butterfly pea flower and according to my google searches and stuff like that it really really goes well with things like um I, excuse me i back up according to my research the butterfly pea flower has a taste to it that's very akin to chamomile another type of tea tysane that is going to make it its appearance this evening and i thought okay what flavor combinations go well with chamomile? Chamomile feels a lot more popular. I feel like I'm gonna have a much easier time trying to find these flavor combos. And it seems that chamomile goes well with the following three flavors, mango, mint, and citrus. Excuse me. Uh, it seems, uh, obviously, that if you make a bee's knees, right, and you put purple empress or butterfly pea flower gin in with a regular bee's knees combina cocktail combination, you'll usually put it with some lemon juice in there, which works perfectly because apparently the flavor of chamomile goes pretty well with the flavor of citrus. I don't know if they mean specifically lemon juice or orange or what have you. We're going to explore a little bit of that this evening. And so this one, we decided, I decided, it was all me, dude. It was all me to just combine it with a little bit of honey syrup and a little bit of blue curacao we're essentially subbing out the what was it oh my god this is why i have a reference to the side i actually taped my book to the wall so that i can look over and take a look at it we're essentially subbing out the lemon juice and instead adding in uh, blue curacao one for the color because we want to make it blue and i tried every possible way that i could think of to take this purple and make it blue and it just once it goes purple it doesn't go back to blue like once you go full purple you you can't go back from that and and so I decided, all right, well, I'm going to take the easy way out on this one, and I'm just going to shake something really blue together with it. It has that orangey flavor to it. Um, that's why I'm, I'm covering my bases that way. And it's going to look blue, hopefully. 
I would like to say as a disclaimer, I have not completely tested all these cocktail combinations. I took a look at the tea that came out, that, or the gin tea combination that came out the next day, and I was like, hmm, that looks like this color. I'm going to say that this is the X color of this particular Bee's Knees theme. So uh, that's how we're going to do it. I'm going to try to make it blue, a purple, a green, a yellow, a red, a pink, and um, hopefully I have enough glasses um, to be able to properly display all these. That'll be fun. Let's kick things off. So, the first thing that we're going to need is our gin. We need two and a half ounces of it. Everything here is shaken, so I have a shaken majigger. These guys, my pint glass, my metal tin, and everything. And I've got large ice cubes to spare. It's kind of hanging down at the side. All I need to do is reach into my mini fridge. I freaking love this thing. I'm going to put one big old cube in there. And I'm going to do a lot of shaking things tonight. I actually have, let's see, on this row of ice cubes, I have five rows of three. Um, so if I'm going to split that evenly, I have 3 times 5 is 15, divided by 6, we're going to go with uh, like 2. We're going to do it 2 tiny ice cubes per. I'll put that in the container. I also have a bucket on standby, because I'm going to be cleaning the shaker a lot. Please bear with me. I've been reflecting more on the experience of how to do these streams and stuff like that. It's not my first rodeo and everything, but it's been a very, very fun rodeo. Um, and so it's just like, I just realized that like you got to take in the environment. Take things slow. Take your time with it. There's absolutely no need to rush through these things. It's a live stream. If you came here for quick content that you can like just regurgitate later, this is not the right place for you. It's gonna be a while. Cocktails take time. I'm not a speed pourer. So we're not gonna, that's not the kind of treatment we get around here. Anyways, two and a half ounces of whatever gin you've got. If you're going for the blue flower, you're gonna need some butterfly pea, uh, butterfly pea flower infused gin or empress gin, which is the uh, the most prevalent butterfly, I, I guess, butterfly. It's the most prevalent purple gin on the part on the market from what I can tell. Uh, this one has a nice blue color to it. I need two full ounces. Uh, that was the best, oh my God. When I was doing my color combos, I spilled so much of it every single time. And that was, I think, the best pour that I've gotten yet out of this container. It's very inconvenient. Thank you. It's kind of staining my fingers a little blue. Not a bad way. It looks kind of cool. I like that. It's a very... I actually... <laughs> I actually, uh, over the weekend, before I did the, uh, got the infusion ideas, I just kind of made myself a cup of the butterfly pea flower tea. And the tea bag itself is a stained, like, blue color. Actually, let's, let's take a look at that, really. Because I still have the... the uh, I still have the tea bag in here. It's just like a, oh my goodness. It's like, it's like a dyed blue color. It is so cool looking. Um, but I had that tea bag hanging above the sink in the basement, um, just kind of sitting there drying and whatnot, because according to who I bought it from, you can steep it up to uh, two, anywhere from two to three times before, you know, all the goodness is gone from it. I think all the goodness is gone from this. It's been sitting in alcohol overnight, so I don't think it's going to get any bluer, any purpler, or any more butterfly pea flower -y, um, if it sits any longer. Um, but in any case, it was really, really funny to see this kind of, like, dry blue sack just hanging above the, the kitchenette down there. And I was like, is that, is that your tea bag there? And I was like, yes, it is. Um, it's very, very blue, so please don't poke it. It's sensitive. The next ingredient we're going to need in the bear in the bee blue flower, a.k.a. the blue flower bee's knees, is we're going to need three quarters of an ounce of honey. Now, I, like I said before, you could use honey syrup if you find that the kind of consistency that you want to go for in your cocktail or the speed, like, the ease of which you get to, like, shake it around is too too great like if you make honey syrup then naturally it's gonna be less viscous than honey as opposed to something like this I'm probably gonna have a little bit of honey that gets left over after each cocktail and stuff I'm gonna try my best to clean out my shaker I don't really have a lot of shaking apparatuses I only have the one that I plan on using um, all my glasses are over there I tried shaking with another one once and it made a total mess so that's that's my that's my experience thus far. In any case, we need three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of honey. I think with the honey, I'm gonna over pour a little bit because most of that stuff winds up getting left over in the glass anyway. So I think if you're gonna do like, if you're doing honey syrup, you could probably do three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters. And if you're doing like honey itself, you might as well bump that up by like, maybe like a sixth of an ounce if you can if you can measure that out. Let's say that it's like a, what I said, three, I said three quarters, bump that up by like, not a quarter, it'd be a full ounce, half a quarter, so an eighth. Yeah, do that. Seven, eight, seven eighths of an ounce, or about um, 20, 27, um, 20. Oh, this is not open. This honey is not open. What am I doing? <laughs> Let's just call that 27.5 ounces. Wait, 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 22 minus 30. It's going to be negative 8 times negative 1. It's going to be 8 divided by 2 is 4 plus 22 is 26. 26 milliliters of honey. 
because I feel like most of it is going to get left behind in the rest of the process. And it's going to pour that inside, right into your glass. I, I put the big cube in there um, because I usually like to do the big cube. Um, but to be perfectly honest, I think that the big cube is going to really, really help in like really getting the honey mixed in with everything else. Also, it's freaking honey. Dude, it's going to be so sweet. These are going to be so sweet cocktails. Some of them sweeter than others. Not all of them, though. Eee, get in there. There we go. That's a sizable amount of honey. Thank you, man. And just pour that in. Just like, just let that sit there for a little while. Get it to know each other. We're gonna do this six more times. So just get comfortable. The next ingredient that we're going to need in this particular combination for the blue flower is gonna use some blue curacao. I was kind of between, I have blue curacao syrup, which doesn't have any alcohol in it. And I have just regular blue curacao, which does have alcohol in it. It's about, I think 20%. It's really not that high for as far as the cores go. And I was like, do you do the alcoholic one or the non-alcoholic one? And it basically came down to a matter of personal preference. I think the blue curacao syrup that I have, which is, I think, Cocktail Artist brand, is just like, it's a, it's a very light flavor. I think it's more detached from orange than I think the blue curacao is. They're both kind of detached from orange. They really don't taste like orange to me. Um, but, you you know, they're certainly giving it their best shot. Um, and so I'm gonna go with the regular blue curacao on this one because I just think that that kind of flavor is what I wanna go for um, in this, for this particular recipe here. So I'm gonna go down and get my curacao. I also kind of played around with the idea of doing some other sort of citrus, but because this was the blue one, I was like, I gotta use blue here. I was honestly under the impression that I didn't have to use any blue curacao at all, anything blue in it at all. I thought just the butterfly pea flower itself would do a pretty good job of getting that across itself. And it really, it really didn't. Because like I said, once you go purple, you just can't go back from that. Three quarters of an ounce of blue curacao, blue curacao syrup. It's really whatever you want it to be. Play your paper. Play to your personal preferences. There's six different ones here. Perhaps one of them is for you. Perhaps not. That's okay. There are other channels. Go there. If you're not enjoying this, I don't care. All right. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a we're gonna give it a shake. This one as well, because we're trying to keep within like you know, do some themed cocktails here, is gonna get garnished with where is it? I had some butterfly pea flour. That's how you're gonna garnish it. You're gonna put some of the flour right up on top. It's beautiful. Whoa, whoa. Steady down there, bottles, please. Calm yourselves. Gotta get the rest of my goo in there. It's kind of stuck there. Oh my goodness. Wow. You are blue and honey. -y. Very strong on the honey. That honey just doesn't want to stay in there. See, I, I told you, there is so much honey left over. Look at that. It's just still going. It's so syrupy. Which again, like if you if you have complaints about that, make some honey syrup. Equal parts honey to equal parts water. It's super duper easy to do. Um, I just didn't feel like doing it because that's not the consistency that I like in my cocktails. But it bears repeating because people tend to forget. And that's okay. I am very much prone to forgetfulness. All right, let's pour it inside, cap it off, and see what happens when we make a blue bear in the bee blue flower, the bee's knees. I'm really trying to blend it in there. I can actually see bits of the honey still at the top of this thing. Um, it's okay. That's why we add a little bit more. And blend it real good. All right, I'm down with that. That feels pretty good to me. That's more or less getting to know each other pretty damn well. If they need to get each other, get to know each other more, they can go get a hotel room. I'm gonna grab one of my glasses from my collection. That's the thing, another one too. I don't really have a lot of small containers to be able to put these in, so the glasses that I choose might not be the best containers for these. If I had it my way, I'd get a coupe glass for each one of them. Each one will look like a tiny little pond of whatever you got. But for some reason, I have a lot of trouble finding coupe glasses in, th in thrift stores and whatnot, probably because they're, they're kind of dainty, a little thin, and break early. And break often so that's what i'm that's what i'm gonna go for i will take the one coupe glass that i have i will put it in there we'll see how to actually i have some tall wait i got some tall ones but i gotta reach for a moment because it's on the far side of the glass table which is very precariously stacked on top of each other not a very good idea cameron but i grabbed it i found a nice cocktail glass and didn't break anything this is good i made my heart race for a moment let's pour it inside and see what it looks like um, will it look cool? Yeah, yeah. That's the confidence talking, not necessarily the uh, the factual knowledge we have of the situation. I'd put it like that. Hey, everybody, cocktail time. Let's give that a. Let's give that a. Whoa, you were really on there. 
let's give that a strain into this glass. I'm also going to be reusing the strain stuff. There will probably be a bit of flavor being leached over. That's why I'm going to use this kind of open, this more open strainer one. This one's a lot more dense than the other one. And so I'm going to use the open one because I want as little of the honey to catch as possible. The honey itself too. We were discussing about the whole like solute and solvent and lo and behold, honey, despite having a shit ton of syrup in it, it has also a really, is can be a pretty damn good solvent as well. So you can actually take things like garlic and stuff and put them in honey and the honey will absorb the characteristics of exactly what you put in there. Like garlic and stuff. It's super duper tasty if I do say so myself. It is, oh... I really want to I really want to make some of my own one day. Oh, don't, don't slip. There we go. That is a blue cocktail. Really? It's the blue, the bear, bear, the bee, 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 the Flower. Bear in the bee blue flower. That's what I'm calling it here. It's blue. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Actually, I forgot to put the fancy lights on it. I'm going to light it from the above because I can. Let's do it. Lights. Camera. It actually looks kind of blue from this angle, but from my angle, it looks blue. Can I make it look blue? Wow, that is very purple. Well, I assure you, I'm gonna take a picture of it right now because from my angle, it actually looks kind of blue. That's what I do. I take pictures of things and sometimes edit them later. Nothing more than some like contrasting effects and stuff like that. Color correction we don't do for these. It just wouldn't feel very respectful to the cocktail itself if I was just like, you are a blue cocktail now. Only in my imagination. Um, oh, but we need to garnish it. I gotta get some of my butterfly pea flour. So I'm gonna go back down. You have some of my butterfly pea flour. Um, you can make a cocktail garnish out of literally anything. So I'm gonna take some dried butterfly pea flour. I'm just gonna kind of like arrange them on top. They're gonna float. They ain't going nowhere. Beautiful little, beautiful little thing there. That's so cute. A cute little cocktail. You're a good little cocktail. You're a beautiful, special little flower. We like to see that. I'm gonna take a quick pick. And then I'm gonna put that somewhere on the internet because it. Whoa! Oh my god. Oh! I was just freaked out. You probably couldn't hear that, but I have a whiteboard in the corner of the room that just completely detached itself from the wall, at least on one angle. So, uh, that's kind of scary. Get a nice little contrast going on there. That's cool looking. I like that. And I have my beautiful bike and leaning. Oh my god, you can actually see the cocked whiteboard in the background. So I'm gonna take another picture of that. And, uh, yeah, that'll be showing up on Instagram later. And, and the Discord, so check it out. If you want to see half of my whiteboard completely falling off the wall. The real question, though, is it blue? Um, let's say yes. Yes, it is blue, at least from my perspective, but I might be colorblind. It does kind of run in my family. Um, how does it taste, though? How does it smell? It smells like gin, mostly. It's a very it's a very ginny drink, as normal. It's got two ounces of gin in there. It's been infused, but that doesn't mean the ginny part goes away. I think they're probably all going to smell like gin, except maybe for the matcha one. Matcha's got a really powerful smell to it, and we did use straight up powder, probably not the smartest thing either. This is what we had available, so that's what we went with. Interesting. Okay. That's got such an interesting flavor to it. Wow. So, the first thing I'm getting is what appears to be the combination of that blue curacao and the honey. That flavor combination is actually quite pleasant it's not entirely foreign i personally wouldn't say that it tastes too much like orange it's something else between. it's definitely more honey than it is orange but i can most definitely taste with a blue curacao in there there's also an angle that's coming from the butterfly pea flower which when i was tasting it over the weekend i would say almost tastes a little i don't know if i necessarily agree with the chamomile part of it it's definitely floral if i had to describe it somehow but it's almost like if, if a flavor of a flower can be buttery or almost creamy, like, I don't know, as I was drinking this thing, I was like, man, I feel like if I were more a tea, coffee, and cream person, I would probably want to put cream in this because it's almost buttery the way that this tastes to my taste buds. And I kind of get that. I don't think, in terms of, like, how smooth cream or butter is, this isn't really smooth that I, I, I would think. And I think that's mostly just kind of, like, the bite of the gin coming back there. And also because, like, it's not really, I mean, the, the, the honey itself can be smooth i guess but i don't think the smoothness translates super duper well in this case that's very very nice though it's definitely i i am the particular taste of this honey is prevalent it's very very prevalent in here it's like i find that there are a lot of different flavors out there that just kind of linger around and whether that's honey in general or 100 percent pure raw and unfiltered honey made by north american bees grade a Nature nates natural. Thy word is sweeter than honey. Psalms 119, 103. Well, the word of God 
lingers in my mouth. So thank you for that, Jesus. I appreciate that. It's not bad. It's it's on the sweeter side. It is, there is there is nothing but there is nothing sour about this. It is all sweetness and a very pleasant sweetness at that. This also though because it's mostly gin has a bite to it. There's two uh, as opposed to having only one alcohol in it like the original Bee's Knees re recipe with the only the gin, the honey, the lemon, and then the twist. This has two different alcohols in it. It's got the curacao and it's got the gin in it. And I think it really shows here. It's definitely more on the boozy side. But it's sweet. It's boozy. It's Curacao-y and it's honey -y. And it's kind of blue. It's like blue adjacent. And I would say too, now that I put the butterfly pea flower garnish on there, it's got a particular it's got a particular smell to it. I wonder, I wonder if I can kind of piece out, describe that. I was trying to find any sort of smell of anything other than paper bag in there, and I really couldn't. It just smells like paper bag, so perhaps this is a beautiful flavor of, ah, uh, the paper bag cocktail. A bee in a paper bag. <laughs> I call that one the bee in the paper bag. Shaken up and then let loose on your enemies. Um, uh, the recipe is in progress, but let's just say spiritually that's what we're having tonight. Beautiful. The blue flower, which I'm going to put somewhere on the bar. Where do we want to put it? I'm going to try to put this in order of the, of the occurrence. How about right there? It's a blue one. Oh, I need a coaster for that because this bar is a little uneven on certain parts. Let's take the square one from Love City Brewing, Philadelphia, because I live in Philadelphia. Would I want to be anywhere else? Yes. Yes, I would. But alas, that's how it is. It's kind of, it's a little wobbly. Can we make it less wobbly? Thank you for trying your best not to be wobbly. If I, if I bake this bar, do you move? Don't move. Good cocktail. Very good cocktail. That was the blue flower, which we've called Bear and the ba Bear and the Bee Blue Flower. I'm still having a hard time saying it. I really can't do this properly. Let me take my little thing here. This thing here. Let's see if I can write the names as I put them down here. I was meaning to put up the names um, ahead of time, um, but I didn't. Uh, I got so much other shit going on in my life. It's a very busy time. Very busy time. Some would say very stressful time. It's okay. We all go through the bad times. What was that? That, that um, that Bob Nelson got Bob Nelson. No, um, who's the painter's name? Not Bob Marley. Oh my God, the dude with the afro. I'm completely blanking on what that dude's name was. You gotta have the bad times so you can have the happy times. I'm waiting on the happy times. Bear, bear, and the bee flower. Does that go off camera? How's that looking? Is this off camera? No, it is not. I'd say we're keeping ourselves pretty well in here. And it's, that's the color white. I could have sworn I just called, got the color blue. Blue, it's this one. It's the blue one. It's the blue one. Now we're gonna move on to the purple one. The purple one has a very, very awesome name. It took me a very, very long time to figure it out. It's called the Purple Bee's Knees. It is literally the Bee's Knees recipe, except it's using the fancy purple gin because this is the way that you would make it if you use the purple gin that you find on the market. It's just a bee's knees. It's not my recipe. I stole it. I stole it from the internet. I got a little bit of, a little bit of cocktail still left into this thing. So I'm going to void it into this glass. There you go, go ahead. I swear it looks blue. I swear, I know y'all don't believe me, but it really looks blue. I'm telling you, from my angle, it's just a very, very deep blue. Imagine like, if you've ever been to like a kitty golf course, a mini golf course, and the water is quote unquote blue, specifically Pirate's Cove in Hilton Head Island, it's a very, very blue water. Kind of looks like that, but like double. And so that's what I'm calling it. I'm also gonna try to do like a bit of a job here to like try to clean out these this particular shaker here, because I want to try and make this as as isolated an experience as possible. I need to move my bucket closer. Excuse me there. The little thing there, kind of pour out what we got. Um, there's still a little bit of, still a little bit of honey in there. Let me see what a little water can do. I need like, I need to fill up a big old container of water so I have it on standby. So um, vibe check time while I fill up some water in this container. Fill up water over here. And I'll see. How you doing tonight? You feel good? You feel all right? It's okay if you don't. It's no problem. Just be honest with yourself. You don't have to be honest with me. You don't know who I am. I don't know who you are. It's fine. That's fine. I decided to wear a flower tonight, a floral shirt. It's the whole flower thing we got going on here. I drew a flower behind me. Not the best flower. Where's the flower? 
I'm still smiling. It's okay. So I got a big thing of water now. I'm gonna try my best to apply this water in a way that I feel is most beneficial to the other cocktails that are to be made. So I'm gonna pour a little bit in all of these, give it a little shaky shoe, and um, see if that works. And if it don't, well, that's just how I remember things, because I didn't test that completely. Excuse me, chunk chew. Didn't mean to do that. Let me see if I can, yeah, just like, I don't know, get my finger in there? I don't know, I just kinda like, there's a lot of honey in there, and I wanna get it out of there as best as I can. Honey can like, honey's mostly sugar. It'll dissolve in water eventually. Um, how well it is though? No idea. Oh, it's certainly working. I'm just gonna use my finger Because I only have one measuring the jigger um, One shaking tin and one clear pint glass that allows for the cocktail to be very easily seen. So that's that's just what we're gonna do I'd say that's clean enough Thank you I'm gonna put that there leave it a little shake just to get things all Cleanish. Wow, that's made a small mess on the floor. Yeah, that's totally making a mess. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that no more. There we go. Just just get to know each other. There we go. It's been clean. My barware has been clean. Don't act like that there aren't local bars near you that do literally the exact same thing between cocktails. The fact that I'm even giving it more than a second or two means that I care. I care at my bar. I care about you at my bar. Welcome to my bar. It's spelled with an X. It does not mean anything, although at some point in time, I, the person who calls himself Cameron with an X, will up get a small tattoo of an X on his hand, or wrist, or somewhere where it's painful, because that's how life is. And when I say that I'm Cameron with the X, you're like, where's the X? Where does it come from? It's on my hand. It's on my hand. Anyway, let's restart back to where we were previously, except now we're going to be on cocktail number two, the purple one. It's called the Purple Bee's Knees, because it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a purple bee's knees. We're going to take your butterfly pea flower gin, just like we did the first time, and apply two ounces of that particular libation. Is it a libation if it's not mixed? I think it is. And put that into your, uh, at least one half of your cocktail shaker. I'm going to try not to spill this time. I didn't spill last time. I didn't spill last time. Keep with it. Keep with it. Keep with it. I spilled just a little bit. That's okay. And I don't really have much of this. Okay, so I had about, I think about five ounces there. Great, 150 milliliters. Not that bad, not that bad. That's all the butterfly pea flower gin that I plan on using. Put that out to the side. Um, I'm gonna just put that away. There's a little bit left. I honestly, I wanna see what other kind of color things that I can do with this. Cause um, I'm starting to get into that realm, that point in my life where I'm like, well, the cocktail books are cool, but like, what can we make on our own? I really don't know. I really don't know. Sky is literally the limit. And sometimes sky is not even the limit. It's great. Uh, I also need ice in my cocktail shake. Ah, we really need that till the end. Nah, I'm gonna ignore it. That'd be fine. The next thing that we're going to need, according to the original cocktail with purple gin in it, is we're gonna need three quarters of an ounce uh, or 22 milliliters of honey, just like we did previously. I'm using the viscous honey, so you might wanna add a little bit more. Let's say 26 milliliters or like seven eighths of an ounce. If you wanna make it easy on yourself, honestly, just kinda, just kinda take some honey. Just, just, just spray it into your cocktail glass. You're not gonna use all of it anyway. You won't. I didn't in my case. Oh, I also flipped to the wrong side. Hmm. So yeah, that's basically what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna, do, uh, metaphorically speaking, I'm going to pour quote unquote three quarters of an ounce into the glass because I chose the wrong side of the measuring majigger. It's fine. It's okay. It's fine. And the next thing we'll need is three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of lemon juice. Significantly less viscous than the honey. So we're actually gonna measure that out properly on the correct side of the measuring majigger. Um, this thing is gonna sit for a moment because some of the honey is gonna collect at the bottom. Because although viscous, it does want to move ever so slowly. I went to the store and bought myself some lemons. So I'm gonna cut me a lemon. Who cuts your lemon today? Your mother? That's okay. Some people don't have arms with which to cut lemons with, so they have to have their parents do it. That's totally fine. We all got our lives to live. I've been told too that a trick online to get the most juice out of your fruits and citruses and stuff, and you gotta kinda like hit the side a little bit, give it a little roll in your hands. Um, I have not made it a practice of doing that, but you know, you can start a good habit any day or continue a bad habit. This is also true. Gonna need half of that lemon. I'm gonna give it a squeeze, and I need two, three quarters of an ounce. 22 milliliters. That's where the two came from. There was no two in three quarters of an ounce. Get in there, honey. Come on. Yeah. All right. I'm going to say that's done. I'm going to say no more honey for this one. 
that's fine. Give me my lemon juicer. It's a juicer for lemons, cause it's yellow. It doesn't have to be yellow, it just is. Um, I'm gonna flip this over, put a little honey on my on my cutting board here. Whoa, don't go anywhere, please. And I need quarters of an ounce. So let's squeeze this thing to see where it gets me. I shake when I apply force with my hands because I'm a weak person. Not in the mind, only in the body. <laughs> Although it really depends on what day it is and what context we're speaking in. Three quarters of an ounce, you got it. 22 milliliters, you got it. Yeah, nice job. Now the thing that I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in for something actually. Because supposedly, when you apply lemon or citrus to your butterfly pea flower concoction, what you're actually doing is you're causing a little bit of a chemical reaction. For the people who aren't, uh, who aren't in the know, Butterfly pea flower, or like the essence within it, is actually a, a, it's a pH indicator. So when you add either a base to it, something that's more alkaline, or acid, something that's more acidic to it, it kind of changes color. Now, this is a very, very intense purple, so I don't exactly know what color it's going to turn. I think it's just... I think it's just like a really a more intense purple or maybe a lighter purple. It's gonna change color. And so we're gonna zoom in for that. Are we bartending now? Dude, we've been bartending for a while now. Heck yeah. Every Wednesday night, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It's kind of what we do around here. Tell your friends or don't. If you have friends, if you don't have friends, also tell your friends. Just look deep within. You'll find something. I promise you that. So let's zoom in. I want to, really want to see what happens. I did very, very minimal experimentation with this, and so I'm inclined to think it's going to be a really cool color change. And um, if it's not, then we can just blame science together, because um, I was under the same impression that you were, and I was just telling you what I heard from the grapevine. So here comes the grapevine. Here comes a nice color switch here. I don't know the best way to be able to... I'm going to backlight this. That's what I'll do. I'm going to zoom in on this. I'm going to zoom in, just like there. Gonna get a nice purple color there. And we're gonna have different. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna see if this works. I have my lemon juice. Wow, that is spilling. It's spilling uh, honey all over the bar. This is my lemon juice back here. I promise. Let's see. Let's get. We got a nice purple color going on here. Actually, you can kind of see the honey is at the bottom. The butterfly pea flower is up on top. If I kind of light it from the side, what is the best way to do this? What's the best way to do this? I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. Can I do it from the bottom? Oh, wait a minute. What if I put my what if I put my phone on the bottom? This is dangerous, maybe? Nah, it's totally covered by the... Hmm. It's a work in progress. We're gonna do it like this. This is the best way that I could do it. Sorry if I'm blinding y'all. I don't mean to. It's, uh, we're working on things around here. Look at that nice purple color. Will it change? Here comes the honey. Here comes the honey. Here comes the honey. Here comes the honey. Use white paper from behind. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. Thank you for the idea, honey. I'm gonna go grab some white paper. I like it. I like it when people give ideas. That's great. Good piece of white paper that I just found on the floor. Let's see. White paper. Oh, introducing contrast. It's a thing that we should have had this entire time. Look at that. Is that working? Yeah, kind of. Well, you know what? We're gonna make it work. All right. All right. Oh, wow, 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 wow. That's really good. Wow, that's really good looking. Keep your hand just like that, Cameron. Just like that. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Wait, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? This way? This way? Yes. Very good. All right. Here comes the lemon. Whoa, I hit the microphone. Don't spill. No. Don't go nowhere. Do this perfectly. Do this perfectly. Where's the glass? There's the glass. There's the glass. Wait, 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 wait. Go the other direction. The other direction. Here we go. Whoa, no, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. Did it turn color? It did kind of turn colors. Hey, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Wow, it totally worked. It's science, everybody. Science is real. God is dead. No, just kidding. That was cool. Oh, that's the wrong direction. Hey, look at that. Totally worked. <laughs> no, I love this man. There are other people who love this man too. And uh, for the most part, this man also loves himself. We're working on it. We're working on it. That's so cool looking. My God. Oh, there's a little bit of honey on my yoga block. Delicious. Let's put that away now, shall we? There we go. I dig it. Well, now that we've added our lemon juice, our honey, honey syrup, I was having a brain fart there for a moment, and the bee butterfly pea flower gin, 
I think might have, that might have been the first time that I said that, absolutely wonderfully correct. And uh, that's, that's, that's what we got. Now we need to go give it a shake. And uh, I need to put ice in my glass. Can we make the incredible drink now? The incredible drink? Tell me, what's the incredible drink? I don't know what the incredible drink is. I'm always on the search for new recipes. I don't know what the incredible is. To be perfectly honest, I took a couple bartending classes. I paid for them out of my pocket. It was um supposedly I have access to a expansive library, uh, an expansive library of cocktail books and stuff at a place somewhere in Center City. Um, I think it's closed actually, so I think I might have got ripped off. Doesn't matter. Um, I don't know all the drinks though. The Incredible Hulk though. The Incredible Hulk. Oh my God. I think I saw, I saw a recipe online of the Incredible Hulk. I think I've done that before. I haven't done that before. Maybe my personal time. Um, we are getting to a green one. <laughs> it's the green one. That comes afterwards. Um, I don't know if it's going to turn green, to be perfectly honest. Um, the matcha. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. The green one is next. Oh, you did say that. Yeah, see, <laughs> I got to read chat. Must read chat. Must stay attentive. Um, let's put this. I'm going to put a little bit of water into my uh, measuring majigger. I'm going to just take from my glass over here just so I get the honey starts dissolving in the background um so it gets ready for the next cocktail because we're working on uh strained resources here that's what we're gonna do stay right there measuring majigger thank you so much measuring majigger i appreciate you i'll take the cutting board off of here no actually we need the cutting board again so we're gonna keep it there keep that right to the side i'm trying to learn how to make a hot version of the incredible hulk what is in the incredible hulk i think it's got it's just got a bunch of different things in it it definitely has blue curacao in it because otherwise how would you get that green color and i think you put you put campari in it no duh, pff, blue and red make purple not not green <laughs> it's okay we try our best around here all right let's combine it together it's a it's a it's more purple it's more purple than the other one or rather it's just purple in a different way Let's shake it up. This is how to create a purple bee's knees. You can use two ounces of butterfly pea flower infused gin or 60 milliliters. If you've got empress gin, it's the purple one. You really can't miss it. You also need three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of honey or honey syrup, depending on your viscosity. If you use honey, add a little bit more. It gets stuck in the glass anyway. And then three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of lemon juice. You can do it squeezed. You can do it store-bought. You can get it from, I don't know, something else that's lemony. The green ones. The green ones are also lemony. Uh, put that together and then garnish it with a lemon twist. That comes next. All right, let's do it. Shaking it all up. In the meantime, Incredible Hulk can be made, thanks to Young Mojo, using Hypnotic and a little bit of Hennessy for this. But if you're using Jack, like fire, to try and make it hot, or like the, uh, the Jack Daniels fire, I tried the, um, I don't know if y'all can hear me over the sound of the shaking, so if you can't, I am so sorry for that. Um, but I've got some, I've tried the Jim Beam fire. That's pretty good. I don't do a lot of sp spicy things. All right, I'd say that's gotten to know each other a bit. And damn, that's very purple. I freaking love this. Nice, we're gonna get to, oh wait, I need to, I need to crack it open first. There we go. Woo! There we go. I would say if you're trying to look for something spicy, but spicy in a different way, obviously you could do, you could do like fireball, but fireball is kind of yellow, um, depending on what kind of color you're going for. I have this liqueur here called Ancho Reyes Chili Liqueur. It's an Ancho Chili Liqueur. It's sweet, it's spicy, but it's spicy in the sense that like, it gets the back of your gullet burning in a good way. So it's not necessarily the same kind of hot as let's say your fireball or your catching fire whiskey or your jack whiskey. Um, but it's another option if you're looking for options. We're here to share, it's the, it's the whole beautiful thing about a show like this. We're all here to share recipes. Nobody can clay, lay claim to something and say, nobody can do this recipe except for me. Unless you're Goslings and you say the dark and stormy is mine. I don't like you Goslings, you're lying to yourself. All right, let's get another glass and pour it on in. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this just so that we can get this process of clarification going for the next cocktail in my little glass here. You see, the more and more you do stuff, the more you figure out a pattern to be able to continue doing that stuff, but more efficiently than you did before. I'm gonna put that back here. Let's take a little sip of water. I talk too much. Let's get another glass. I'm gonna keep things kind of within their color range, so I'm gonna use the same glass for blue and purple, the same glass for green and yellow, and maybe the same glass for red and pink. We're gonna see how things go. I have pairs of glasses up here. We're gonna give it a shot. I just have to be very careful. It's very far away. Yes. I got it, successfully. Did I unplug my microphone? I did not, excellent. It's a very, I realized that I can unplug the microphone very, very easy over here. Um. 
It's not, that was not according to plan. It just kind of happens that way. I actually noticed earlier in stream, every single time OBS goes through an update, it, um, it, it, re it completely forgets what devices I have plugged in, which is kind of annoying. Anyway, this is a purple bee's knees. It's a bee's knees, but it's purple. <laughs> it's, it's nothing else. There's really nothing else going on there. It's pretty dope. Pretty dope. I'm gonna get closer on this one because I think this one's actually gonna be purple in all the right ways. Do I have the right amount of yoga blocks? Yeah. All right. Yoga blocks. Young Mojo also said, "Oh, they used the um, the Henny with the Jack and stuff." I already read that. It's gone. It's gone off screen. I sometimes get confused. Let's give it a strain and then put a lemon peel on top of it. That's how we do it. Strain it in. Is it purple? It is definitely more purple than it was previously. Oh, that's nice. Ah, I like that. That is a much more vibrant purple, even than the kind of dim lighting that we have around here. I kind of need to, I'm still working on the whole lighting and everything, but we definitely need a point where like things light up properly. Let me see if I can like, I light it from the bottom. How does it look from the bottom? A. No, that's pretty dope. Oh, but now if I use this, I can't take a picture with it. Wait, 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 I have an idea. I have two cell phones. One's dead. Come here, you. I can use this as my picture majigger. We'll try that. I'm just gonna wait here for a moment as the phone boots up and stare at this thing. Aren't you beautiful? Oh wait, I can make a I can make the garnish in the background. I need a lemon. I need a lemon twist. Here's a le <laughs> lemon. I need a twist it. I gotta get one of these thingamabobs. Let's make a lemon twist in the background. Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha 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 ha! Lemon twist. It's a twist of a lemon. We're gonna twist that. I already did. No, I didn't. I lied to you. Twist. Rim the glass. Drop it in. It's completely gone. Alrighty then. You know, I'm gonna do another one, except this time I'm gonna put it on the side, because the garnish game was not on point. Here's another one. I'm not very fast at these either, but this feels like a good one. Oh, that's definitely a better one. Oh yeah. Alright. I'm gonna twist that a bit more. A little bit more over top. It's spraying the juices everywhere. Now I'm gonna put it on the side like that. It's not working the way that I want to, but it's beautiful. There we go. That's perfect. Um, oh, ho, 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 ho. zoom out a little bit. Ain't that pretty looking? It's a bee's knees. It's purple. Okay, I have to unlock my phone for all features and data. There we go. That's not the wrong pin. You're the wrong pin. Jeez. Take a photo. Ha 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 ha. That's nice and purple looking. I don't have to do any significant editing on that one. Or at least I don't plan to. That's so cool looking. Actually, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the blue one. I'm gonna do I'm gonna give it the exact same treatment because I kinda wanna see what this looks like now that we've learned our lesson. It is comparatively more blue than its counterpart. Nope, from this angle now it looks purple. Well, that's fine. We're gonna put that to the side. I ignore that that ever happened. Great. Wonderful. That's fine. It's fine. Oh, I can take my phone back. <laughs> the main phone, that is. This is actually my old phone. I had to, I, I replaced my old phone because it wasn't charging and stuff. Um, and so I got a new phone. And then I realized that this thing just wasn't charging. And the port was completely covered with lint and dust and stuff. So, in actuality, before you hand in your new phone, actually, when you hand in your new phone, check and see if you can take dust out of the old one, and you might just be able to recover it and still use it for other things, like taking pictures and whatnot. So, uh, that's pretty cool. That would be my suggestion. Something... Oh, I have tape on my pants. That's pretty cool. It's the painter's tape, so it's blue and it fits. So, how does it taste, though? How does a purple bee's knees taste? Does it taste any different than another bee's knees? I don't know. It smells like lemon because I just put two lemon peels in it and expressed the, the juices all over the place. Oh, interesting. Okay. It's very sour. That's got a sourness to it. I think, in general... Oh, no, 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 there's the honey. There's the honey. The honey came after. So, comparatively, the blue curacao-based bee's knees, without the lemon, without anything sour in it, is naturally a lot more sweet than this one here. This one's a lot more sour, but it kind of, it, it's got a nice, like, it's got a change to it. It tastes like honey, and it tastes like lemon. It's almost as if you took, let's say, a lemon wedge, 
and you put honey on top of it, but just a little bit of honey. So like the honey is still there, but there's a lot of sour packing a punch there. I would say comparatively with this particular recipe, with this particular honey, not a honey syrup in this case, note that, and this particular gin, I think the lemon juice kind of overpowers the gin in this case. So I'm not really getting too much of it there. My palate is not that refined and I just kind of have an aversion towards things that are sour. So my palate sen tends to focus on sour things a lot more than the other characteristics of the drink. Uh, it usually goes sour, um, sour, spicy, sweet, uh, and the other stuff, I guess. It's, you know, it's a, it's a work in progress. With more years and more experience, supposedly that might change. Actually, you know what? Okay, so I did some more tasting there. I did some more of that thing that sommeliers do where they like, they do like the thing with their mouth. It's disgusting, but uh, it works. And now I'm tasting the gin characteristics or more on like, um, I'm gonna stick my tongue out for a moment. Please be okay with that. Not the tip of the tongue, eh ha. Like the mid part of my tongue there. That's where I tasted the gin. I don't know if there's any science behind that. It might just be total hoo-ha, but that's what I'm experiencing today. And even when I'm experiencing a bunch of rainbows popping up over my walls, it's still my experience, but I might be insane clinically, who knows. In any case, it tastes, I get the gin in the middle of it. So I think, at least for this particular combination with my particular um, palate, I find that there's a disconnect between the sour and the sweet that's going on here. It's not really combined together. And I think it's because the lemon juice is just probably more overpowering. Honestly, with any type of cocktail, you kind of know what's best for you and what's best for your taste buds. I'm not a big fan of sour things. So when I like to make myself my drinks, I take the sour stuff and I bring it lower. I put less lemon juice in there. I put less lemon uh, lime juice in there. I just tend to do that because that's just how my deal goes. Also, very acidic things tend to make my body act up, so. You gotta stay hydrated there. Actually, even right now, I can feel I can feel a buildup occurring in the back of my nose, up to my esophagus. <laughs> that was it. In any case, we move on. This was the purple bee's knees. It's a bee's knees made with purple gin. It's uh doesn't get much more complicated than that, I think. Again, as I've mentioned prior, and as I will continue to remind, I like to do these cocktail things every Wednesday, or at least we try to, unless something pops up. And things pop up every once in a while because like that's just how life is if you're into that kind of stuff and you're here now feel free to drop a follow you don't have to but like if you want to be reminded of it and get those bells and stuff cool that's all you have to do i'm also on instagram i'm also on tiktok there's not much on tiktok yet but we're working on that and everything winds up on youtube there's no pressure there either you just do whatever you want to so long as you came here and you're vibing then you don't have to lift your finger you don't have to lick your body you don't have to do anything just chill and we'll move on this one was the purple one so we're gonna erase the purple one and replace it with actually i don't even have to erase the purple it literally has purple as the first word in the title i will say although you don't have to follow if you do i'll put on a party hat It'd be pretty cool purple bees knees bees knees bees and their knees bees apostrophe s because it's the possessive bees Knees. Anatomically speaking, I'm honestly unsure if bees even have knees, but honestly, if the cocktail community, the statistically drunkest one, I suppose, wants to say that bees have knees, let's just let them have it. They can do whatever they want to. Just, just let the people have their way. Pick some of the water up in these guys. Oh, I forgot to add the rest of it in there. That's okay. All right, and then into the dump bucket. We'll reset for round two. There we go. I got a big old bucket back here that I use for the for the, the things now. It uh, works out pretty well. I feel like I need a perpetual coaster. Like I feel like my entire bar needs to be covered in coaster or else I just see like things popping up. I have to clean my bar. I understand why like, like the stereotypical bartender is the one who's tending their bar all the time. The bar is never clean. It's never clean. I mean, I don't expect it to be because we're making cocktails here, but seriously, though, many of them are very syrupy. They do not want to leave the bar. Um, let's see. For the next one that we have, I don't need, I do not need my cutting board. So I'm gonna put my cutting board away. Um, it's also got a bunch of uh, honey on it. So I'm gonna, okay, part of that was not honey. Part of that was lemon juice. Yep, that, that makes total sense there. I also got a little on my face. Sorry about that. 
I'm gonna look that up. It's fine. It's totally cool. The next cocktail that we have on our list is, you guessed it, it's the green one. It's not the Incredible Hulk. I don't have Hennessy, going back to that particular recipe. I don't have Hypnotic, and I don't have Hennessy, because I honestly haven't found, an, I haven't found a need to go out and get Hennessy. I just... It feels like it's a branded thing. I don't really need it. Same thing with the Jack. I don't need Jack. I got all these other bourbons in my collection. Um, not that it's an expansive one. Um, but the other part there is the, um, is the Hypnotic. I don't really know too many cocktails that use Hypnotic. I usually wind up going out and I find an ingredient for a particular cocktail that I'm making or one that I want to make. And just Hypnotic's never popped up on my radar. But more and more grow. I'm constantly adding new cocktails to the repertoire. I have like a little app that I use for that. It's convenient. At some point, I'm trying to figure out a way to best like host all the recipes that we cover here and the best way to be able to put up recipes that I haven't covered, because, like, there's a, I, I got so many cocktails in there, like, I don't need to keep those out of myself. There's, like, over 300 of them. There must be a way to share, and I'm not going to make an Instagram post for every single one of them. That's a lot of effort, and it's not sustainable. Not scalable, either. But in any case, the green one is is a gin-infused. We're finally moving away from the butterfly pea flower. Instead, we've infused it with matcha. I probably could find matcha leaves out there, but I have matcha powder in my collection, so I decided to see if you could take gin put matcha powder in it and see if it turns a different color and lo and behold it totally did the matcha powder that i used is the stuff that i picked up from whole foods when i was still at the other apartment it's just it's just it's just matcha powder that's all it is and then i have this little green top container to remind me that this is the green one and it's like um i'm gonna be honest it's not really that green it was green at first it was like a very dark green hue and then it became something a little bit different actually let me do my let me do my little light trick again that thing that I do with the light, do this. Yeah, like, that. whoa, that, that's kind of working. Hey, well, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's move that out of the way. Zoom in a little bit. Try to see what the best location for that is. I have multiple different screens that I can look at, and I'm blocking the camera. That's great. There we go. This is the kind of color that it's turned out to be. It's like, it's got a nice, it's green to it. The bottom doesn't really light up very well because there's just a bunch of matcha powder down there. But from a distance, uh, it's kind of got a, it's got a brownish color. It honestly just looks like swamp water, to be perfectly honest. So if you're looking for a particular combination that is going to garner you swamp water, um, this is, this would be my recommendation. Just put matcha powder in gin. It's going to turn really, really weird looking. And I don't know if it's going to taste good or smell good. I just, I really don't know. Um, and eventually we'll figure that out. That seems like a good distance. So yeah, all I did for this one is I put matcha powder and gin. I let it sit overnight and it became that interesting color. It smells like... Pop it open. Oh yeah. Okay. As I was mentioning earlier, matcha to me has a very powerful scent to it. And this matcha infused gin smells less like gin than it does like green tea it's really really smells like somebody made some matcha tea it's really really good it really doesn't smell like so like the um the butterfly pea flower gin where'd i put it i put it down here has like a very if i recall it's very alcohol forward you can smell the alcohol on this yeah you can smell the alcohol coming off it's got a almost kind of barnyardy it's almost it almost kind of smells like hay um which is kind of it's like a it's like a wet hay like imagine that you're at a, on a farm but the farm has a chlorine pool on it that's what i would imagine what that smells like it's almost like you took a hay bale threw it in a pool with chlorine water took it back out and let it sit for a day or so and dry that's kind of what it smells like that's what i would say the butterfly pea flower infused gin smells like although this thing here smells like a cup of tea a cup of tea that's been sitting around naturally i can still smell the alcohol and the gin in there because it's predominantly gin but it's honestly it's more tea like than it was previously i'm gonna take a little sip of it just a tiny bit because i don't have much of it for the cocktail oh my god yeah wow wow look at that it tastes like matcha it tastes like green tea that's really really good what a combo mm. I have an idea for my own spirits brand now. But seriously, though, it kind of tastes like... I think matcha, to me, has a much more dry and bitter taste to it than most green teas do. It tastes like the bitterness of tea and has the dryness of the matcha. And it even... It, damn, it even tastes like the matcha. Like, I can't even... I can't even try to go around that. It tastes like alcoholic matcha, as if somebody put a bunch of vodka into a cup of matcha tea. It's exactly what that tastes like. And we're going to put it on a cocktail. Now, during my research, I was finding that matcha tends to pair well with... I'm looking up on reference document over here. White chocolate, 
vanilla, and almond. Those matcha flavors go really, really well with chocolate. You've probably seen Pocky before. Pocky, that's a little like biscuits with the chocolate on the end of it. You can find green tea Pocky out there. You can find Kit Kats that are flavored like green tea. And to be honest, I, I'm gonna use the term matcha and green tea interchangeably. Not every green tea is matcha. It's just a particular type of tea and not necessarily a, a specific type of tea either. It's a whole family of things. I would recommend a book called Serendipity. It's serendipity, the word, except the T at the end is instead of T-Y is T-E-A. Um, it's a good book. I don't, uh, I don't remember who it was by, and I don't know where it is. Otherwise, I'd take, otherwise I would take it out and show you all. But it's a great book. And it kind of taught me the difference between like different types of teas, what you expect from them, what an oolong is versus a black tea versus a white tea. Um, other like really popular teas out there like Lapsin Suchong and Gunpowder and um, Pu'er Tea and just, just a lot about it. It was really cool. It kind of sparked my interest in teas. Funny story about the tea is um, my fiance went to a flower show here in Philadelphia. I wasn't able to go. I was at work that day, unfortunately. But but she went to a stand and there was somebody there selling teas and whatnot and so she approached the stand she's like hey i would like to buy some tea but i don't really know too much about it um and, and the guy was just like yeah well, well let me show you to the area over here where you have like all the like steepable pouches and stuff like that and he's like well well see i'm actually here buying tea for my fiance who's a bit more of a tea like a bit more interest in tea than just like the bags that you find and he's like oh like oh wh what kind of stuff does your fiance like and she's like i don't really know i like all different types of teas i don't think there's a particular type that i like however i really really like Earl Grey tea. It's got a special place in my heart. Earl Grey tea and lavender. Excellent combination. Make a lemon fog latte. Anyway, and so this guy was like really, really excited. And he also asked, he was like, oh, oh, like your fiance's really into tea. Like, is he oriental? Apparently the words that he said exactly. And, and I was like, no, I'm not, of, I, I'm not of East Asian descent. Like, I don't think in any form. I think the farthest east that my family goes is maybe some part of, I think Czechoslovakia, I think. But really, I'm just, I'm an American, I'm a white American boy. That's really all that I am. And he was like, wow, that's even cooler. And he also has an interest in tea. And he showed her, he, he showed her like an entire box of, like, got this whole bo red box of tea that I've got downstairs. There's a couple of like little tea balls in it that are supposed to be black tea and they, they pop up in the water and it's cool. It's cool. In any case, this is not from that batch there, um, but now that I know that this whole gin infusion thing is a thing, I kind of want to see what else we can do with it. Bring the world of alcohol together with the world of tea. Not something that hasn't been done before. It's been done plenty of times over. I think there's a really famous drink out there. I think it was made by a bar. I don't remember what the bar name was, but it was called the Earl Grey Martini. And I've always wanted to make that for myself. And now I kind of know how to. We just need to make Earl Grey syrup. I don't think the, the tea is actually infused into the spirit itself. You make like a syrup from it, which very similar process. Instead of you adding the tea bag to the solvent, which in this case is water, you also shed sugar to it and you give it a boil, heat it up, Pull it back down, you have a super saturated solution, which is known as syrup. Not super duper saturated, but pretty saturated. In any case, let's make what I'm calling the green bumble. I wanted to call it the green hornet, but it didn't feel very bee-like because I don't even know if a hornet is a bee. I think it's more closely related to a wasp. I call it the green bumble. It's got two ounces of matcha gin, three quarters of an ounce of amaretto because matcha goes pretty well with almond according to the internet, and it has three quarters of an ounce of honey in it. Again, it's gonna be a sweet one because there's there's a there's a liqueur in it, uh, but, but it's it's a liqueur. It's sweet. It's it's wonderful. And Di Serrano amaretto, which is the amaretto I'm using, is oh. It's so good. So let's bring our combinators, our apparatuses with which we will combine back to the forefront here. Like I said before, we need two ounces of your infused gin. In this case, it was infused with matcha. I have a big like layer of matcha on the bottom. Um, I don't really plan on getting, I don't really plan on getting the, um, the matcha powder in there. Um, so I'm gonna very carefully try to pour out from this container. Um, I'm gonna try to, actually, I'm actually kind of nervous about that. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna grab a funnel. I have to have a funnel around here, right? Do I not have a funnel? I could have sworn I had a funnel here. Okay, well, I don't have a funnel per se, uh, but I have this thing, which I printed, and it's also basically a funnel, and it doesn't, mm, I don't know about that. Hmm. I might have to throw that out afterwards. 3D prints made of PLA are not exactly very good and proficient at keeping their, keeping their things about them. So let's see if that works. Um, I also kind of want to put a little filter over it. A little bit, a little bit of cheesecloth, because I really don't want to catch all the matcha in there. I don't want all the powder, so uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of cheesecloth over it, just like this, just like that, and uh, here, here we go. Here comes the tea. Yeah. No, don't, don't spill, don't spill. Okay, just gonna let it sit for a moment. Go for it. You got it. You got it, dude. I believe in you. Actually, I can't see how full the measuring glass is. 
This is not very conducive to what I was hoping to do. All right, I gotta bring it above. It, oh, that's about, that's about half an ounce. All right, we're gonna do it again. Get him. Yeah, nice, nice. I'm gonna keep doing this, this is working. This is totally working. I was hoping it would. Excellent. Yeah, keep going. Two ounces. I don't know how many ounces are in here. I'm kind of making a little bit of a mess, but it's okay. Two ounces? Two ounces? Oh, we're almost there. Almost, 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 almost. There we go. All right, sweet. Oh my God, that totally worked. I'm so happy about that. I'm gonna put that in my... Oh goodness, it still has stuff in it. All right, well, by the way, she's gone. All right. I'm gonna conserve the rest of this. Um, I will more finely prepare the rest of that later. That's cool. Thank you, matcha gin. Matcha thank you to the matcha gin. Thank you very much. Let's put that into our cocktail shaker, or at least one half of it. Two ounces or 60 milliliters of matcha infused gin. It looks like tea. It's got a nice yellow greenish color. It's not as green as I wanted it to be. Uh, I did not put any sort of um, color correction uh, flavor uh, ingredients in here. I didn't want to. It's supposed to come out. It was, um, if you want something green, like super, super duper green, uh, I have this apple liqueur here. And I was actually thinking of going in an apple direction for this, but I didn't find that the matcha, that supposedly matcha tea goes well with like uh, a vast array of fruits and things like that. Matcha itself is not... I mean, from what I can tell, from what I can view from a very shallow Google search, that it's not necessarily a fruit combined tea tea. There are other teas for that. The next thing that we need in our glass, just as like we did before, is we're gonna need some honey in there. So I'm gonna fill up just like before, three quarters of an ounce, 22 milliliters, add a little bit more for good luck. Let's call it 26 milliliters of honey. Put the honey in there. And we'll see if that works out. Most of it gets left behind anyway, so whatever whatever i wish i like had a way to just like hold this here for a moment and then i can go take care of other things while that gets held there do i have anything that can work like that oh no no, no. i got stuff on the side of the glass can i put you there nope you're gonna slide right up what if i what if i what if i tape it there what if i can tape it just like there no that's not gonna work i'm not no, i'm not gonna bother with that this is a this is a practice of Patience, temperance, tolerance, self-love, awareness, um, mindfulness. Yes, mindfulness very much. Watching the honey drip into the cocktail shaker. It's a, uh, it's a process. A delicious process. I'd say that was most of it. I'm going to put my rings back on. They got all sticky. I don't like it when my rings are sticky. It's just bleh. It's just bleh. All right, next thing that we're gonna do, we're just gonna add three quarters of an ounce, or about 22 milliliters of amaretto. I have two amarettos, but I'm gonna go with Di Sirono. Uh, my mother was over the other day. She's a huge amaretto buff, specifically Di Sirono, and she drank most of it. So uh, we're gonna take whatever's left of it. Thanks, mom. And we're gonna put this in this cocktail and see what kind of flavor we get. Honestly, the matcha smell is really profound. I really want to know what kind of combination that we're going to get with the Di Sirono, which in my opinion has a very, very strong sugary almond taste, which I just, I absolutely love amaretto. It is a wonderful, wonderful spirit, and Di Sirono would be my recommendation. Although, here's, here's a tip. When you get the Di Sirono bottle, don't tighten it too far when you put it back on, otherwise you'll break the cap off, and it just doesn't look as cool anymore. It'll keep well. It's got a bunch of alcohol in it. How could it not keep well? I also have various other like nut-based liqueurs in my collection. Tihi. Um, one of them is I have like I, think I have a hazelnut liqueur in there. Um, it's not Frangelico. It's just the Haram Walker like liqueur thing. I also have praline liqueur. Praline being more pecan, um, although it's more like that sugary caramelly pecan. It's a it's a treat that they make down south here in the Americas and probably elsewhere in the world, but perhaps by a different name. I'm honestly not so sure. Not too not too up on my geography. I saw a joke on Reddit the other day about people saying something, something, something Americans in their geography. And I, I didn't exactly know what it meant. I'm guessing it was supposed to be a hit on people in America saying they don't know their geography too well. I know my 50 states. I think I think I know geography well enough. What their relative positions are to each other um, is a different story. But if you put it at an area on the map, I feel like I could genuinely give you a relatively accurate idea of what state or states could be around there. It's, uh, I don't know. Just a special ability, I suppose. And now that you have your three quarters of an ounce of amaretto, your three quarters of an ounce of honey, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on what you want, um, and two ounces or 60 milliliters of matcha infused gin, we're gonna shake it all up together. 
I gotta get some eyes. Let's get some eyes. Ice, ice, baby? No, please don't ice your baby. And by ice, I mean Smirnoff ice, uh, which is a malt beverage that you can buy for a very cheap and affordable price over at the 7-Eleven down the street, or at the uh, pizza place down the street from my fraternity house. Um, and sometimes you can ice people. You hide in ice, you say, ah, you got iced, and then you have to chug a whole bottle of it, ice cold. Uh, it's a thing. Uh, in that regard, that type of ice, please do not conduct that to your baby, or else um, if I find out, I will probably call the police on you. That baby doesn't deserve that. Although you can put like ice on their wound, or not ice on their wound. No, you don't ice a wound. Do you ice a wound? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not the eventually to be doctor in the house, so uh, I'm not even gonna go there. All right, take your solution. Put it in the glass. It's not very green, but it's the greenest thing that we have here. It's got green tea in it, and give it a big old shake. Shake a shake time. to shake this one a lot because honey is viscous it just doesn't want to move it's got that chemical property that um so like that liquids crave i suppose i don't know <laughs> i don't know where i'm going with that inertia or something and let's see what class do i want for this very carefully pull over grab a glass from the back very carefully ah this guy this guy will be our glass today it's also a nice, fancy-looking glass, just like the last one, but it's a little different, just like they all are. We're all a little different from each other. Let's get a nice view on there and uh, see what it looks like when we pour it. It's probably not going to be green. I'm going to warn you right now. It's probably going to be more brownish, but brown is the closest that we're going to get to green for today, so uh, I'm going to take it. Is that good? Looks pretty good to me. Uh, over there. Perfect. All right. Let's see what that looks like. It's a matcha bee's knees. Not your bee's knees. I don't want to know what a bee's knees with cheese looks like. This is... Wow. This kind of looks like dirt. Whoa! That was a lot of liquid in there. Hey, oh. Yeah, go for it. No, no, you got more? Yeah, give us some more. Interesting. Wow. This looks like brown mustard. That's not green at all. Wow. That looks like swamp water. I love it. It looks like light coffee. It's like a latte. It's not too bad. You know, matcha goes really well with lattes too. I was gonna say, I could even put coffee in there, honestly. How does that look under light? Does that look good under light? How does that look from the back? Honestly, that's doesn't seem that exciting. It's got, it's got quite the, now it doesn't really look that good. It's got a crema on top. It's actually got a layer of foam up on top. Can you see that up there? That's really good. So we're gonna garnish this with some more matcha powder. I've got more matcha powder over here. I'm just gonna kinda take take some of it into a little scoop. Do I have a little scoop here? I gotta have a scoop here. Give me the scoop. Give me the scoop, Doc. Am I dying? Yes, Cameron, you're dying. Oh, I have a spoon over here. Excellent. Maybe I put it on the back of the spoon, pretend it's green cocaine. Oh yeah, no, just kidding. Um, we didn't really need a lot of it. I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle it over the top. Give it a nice look to it. Um, honestly, the matcha is a lot more green. Oh, you know what I can do? I can make a shape with it. The white piece of paper comes back. If you ever want to make shapes on the top of your cocktails that have like crema and stuff on them, you can put like a little piece of paper on there and just kind of like dust over a top of it and like make shapes and stuff. I am gonna try... I want to try to make an X. Can I try and make an X? Nah, that's, that's too difficult. We're gonna, we're gonna do this instead. I'm just gonna kind of shake, 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 Shinora, please. Shake, shake, damn you. Oh, actually, I think tapping is actually gonna be better here. I got a little thing on the side. Um, let's do it on the other side. I kind of like the way that looks. Honestly, this matcha aesthetic looks like it would go really, really well with like, um, um, what is it? A thyme sprig on top, a sprig of thyme. Come on now. This is my first time doing this. Not that bad. That's not that bad at all. Well, I mean, it looks a little weird, but you know what? I'll take it. I will take it. It doesn't look that bad at all. Man, give me a little sprinkle in the center with my fingers. Yeah. 
Here we go. It looks kind of cool in the center. There we go. Matcha powder. Wow, that does not go back in the bag. Holy crap. There's my finger. <laughs> I got a green finger now. That's pretty. That's. I was going to say that. <coughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Don't put matcha powder on your tongue. Man, that is dry and bitter. Wow. Oh. Oh, my God. Here comes the cocktail. Jeez. That's wild. I gotta get this shit off my fingers without my tongue. It is such a stainer. Wow. That is a very, very fine matcha powder. Matcha do about nothing. The next matcha based cocktail I make is gonna be called matcha do about nothing. Or unless somebody beats me to it, you can take that. If you can beat me to it, you can have it. That's pretty cool looking. Can't, gotta, can't, can't forget to take a picture of that. That's nice looking. That is really, really cool. Wow. Take a look at that. It actually kind of looks like kind of looks like beer in my opinion. It's kind of like coffee-ish because of the opaqueness, but it also kind of looks like beer. Like in the sense that like it's a dark like a it's a light brown amber color and it's got a froth on top, but the froth isn't going away. I'm trying to think what would cause the frothing. It must be the 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 cohesion action of the liquid combining with whatever bits of the matcha are left, I guess. That's really cool looking. Wow. Let's see how it tastes. How does it smell? Oh my god, it smells like amaretto. It smells like amaretto and a little bit of green tea. Actually, mostly like amaretto. I'm guessing getting mostly amaretto vibes in there. And it's it's not it's not unwelcome. It's nice. I wonder if the cream, the crema on top is more matcha-y or more amaretto-y. So let's, let's do a little tongue dip. Oh wow, that's interesting. So the, the foam up on top actually tastes like a very fine combination. I think it's actually just the matcha. I was going to say, it tasted like amaretto and the matcha, but I think the amaretto flavor was coming from the, what came below, what's at the bottom of the foam. I think my tongue went a little too deep there. Also teehee. But like, it's a, it's a very matcha-y foam up on top. And I didn't stick my tongue into the part that clearly has matcha on top of it. I tried to get a little bit to the middle to try to get an opinion of what that is. That is really, really cool. That is such an interesting effect. Wow. I love to accept this is why I love mixology. You can make new things. I was not expecting this at all. Let's see how it tastes. Whoa, okay. Oh, interesting. Oh. It tastes like a sweet and dry combination. It tastes like amaretto. It's definitely got amaretto to it. I feel like if I had to, if I had to kind of give a description it's the amaretto it really does gel well together my goodness the amaretto pairs with the sweetness of the honey i'm kind of getting a mix between that amaretto sweetness and the honey sweetness i can definitely taste the honey back there somewhere it's kind of coming a little after i feel like the flavor of this particular honey tends to tends to not come back around until after you've taken your first sip and gotten a little air into your system and now that i do my little i'm gonna do my little sommelier thing Oh yeah, no, I'm getting I'm getting the the honey, getting the amaretto in the back, and I'm getting the matcha dryness in the front. It really is a nice combination of all these things together. Dare I say, I think that this could actually use less amaretto in it. Honestly speaking, I think that the amaretto has a sweetness to it that has been completely bolstered. I think if I had to do this differently, because I feel like this is a really, really cool concept here, and I feel like it'd be re rebalanced even more. It's an it's it's really, really good tasting right now. It's just such a com it's a combination that like I wasn't even I wasn't even going for it. and like I was also trying to avoid green and nut to uh, like to evoke the feeling and thought of pistachio because this isn't pistachio like and I feel I feel like if you were to look at this and be like oh nut green like cream looking thing you'd probably be like oh is it pistachio or something it's not pistachio this is not pistachio like at all aside from like whatever bitterness you may have from like the shell of the pistachio but that that's it although to be honest when I was looking at combinations for matcha there was also like I think it was was pistachio part of that one too try to look there was something else that says pistachio on my list I don't know what it was. Um, yeah, I think it. I think it might have been. Yeah, I think it was the matcha powder. The matcha powder said like it goes well with like pistachio and stuff. I didn't have anything pistachio related. There's nothing pistachio in this house. Could probably like grind up a bunch of pistachios to make like a pistachio syrup, which I've seen done before, and I'm sure it tastes amazing. But uh, I didn't do that. So I'm gonna pour whatever else I have in here. This is 
Ooh, this is a keeper. This is one for the books. That's a really, really good one. Wow, that is really, really good. Incredible. All right, I'm gonna do my little cleaning thing that we have around here. I'll put it off to the side. It's been a lovely cocktail. This has been a lovely, lovely evening so far. We're about halfway through things. We got three more cocktails left. Um, only when we get like really, really good ideas or a really, really awesome. Yeah, when we, when we get really good ideas, we go for a little while. Uh, the cocktail hour is still going. Uh, consider this your two to three hour happy hour. And it's uh, going well so far. And I appreciate everybody who's been here so far. You were wonderful. You were great. Thanks for coming to my bar. It's our bar. Although it's really, it's, it's really, you know what? If you want to take ownership of the bar, like you want to feel like a sense of ownership to this place, that's fine. That's totally cool. I'm totally okay with that. So long as you don't trash the place. Like if you take ownership over your own apartment and decide, ah, I live here, I'm going to shit on the floor, then please don't take ownership of my bar. It's my beautiful bar. The bar does not have a name yet. I have yet to come up with a name for this bar, although I do want to name it at some point. Um, I just, I haven't, I haven't found a right name yet. I haven't found the right name that evokes what I want from um, in my particular bar thing. I need a little more water in my measuring jigger. I've been kind of cleaning it by hand back here because um, I only have one. Uh, I plan on getting more. I got a birthday coming up. Somebody will buy it for me, maybe, or I'll buy it myself. I just had the, my bike broke the other day and um, Anna's bro bike just broke today. So we've had to spend, oh, almost $1,000 on bikes and bike repairs in the last week alone. And I'm not quite happy about it, but this is what we have financial buffers for. This is why we budget for things. This is why we don't go to Disney every single week. It's so that when the bikes break, we can repair them and have a pleasant commute to work, even as the weather gets crazy, freaking crazy, like hurricanes and snowstorms and stuff like that. The snowstorms aren't here yet. And I hope when they do arrive that they take their time because I don't want them yet. Excuse me. I'm going to fill up on my water again. Take a small little break here. I'm not taking a break or anything like that. Just a little hydration break. And then I'll fill up. So you need a little bit of hydration. At least a little bit of hydration. Got to, got to hydrate. If you don't hydrate, you will dehydrate. I say that way too much. That is not my phrase. I don't remember where I got it from, but it's not my phrase, but I love it so much. It's such a wonderful phrase. It reminds us of our mortalities. And honestly, I could be reminded of my mortality more often. I can be a rather rambunctious individual. All right, let's put this over on display. I'm gonna put it on this circle-y one. Do we have space? Is that gonna show up? Put it here, right in front of the little dudes on the, on the thing. Put them over here come to think of it i think maybe i should put them on the other side i'm gonna do that that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do that i'm gonna move my keyboard back a little bit move this back a little bit um and i am going to put my cocktails on the other side let's see how that goes you need a little bit more slack come on computer you need a little more slack that's what i'll do i'm gonna try to put them in order of creation the order of creation starts as a thus. First, you put the blue one in the front. That didn't really rhyme, but that's okay. I'm not... I would say I'm not much of a musician. I like music. I've actually considered... I realized that downstairs in our, in our new two-floor apartment, there is a pantry, or rather, it's a sauna closet that probably used to be a sauna. And we use it as a closet. And we found out, uh, or right, I found out, as I was screaming in the closet because something fell on my foot and I was like... And I was like, wow, there's no echo in here. That was my first thought. Not, um, that was just my second thought, I guess, because the first thought was, ow, my foot, please. Oh, God, help. Um, it was mostly just my toe. I stubbed my toe in there. It was, really wasn't that bad. I'm just being a drama queen. But then as I screamed in there, I was like, oh, the acoustics are pretty nice in here. I bet this could be a nice recording room. But I'm not taking all this and putting it in a closet. Um, the closet is not big enough. Not for what we do here, at least. It just wouldn't work out. Oh my god, I just I still have more setup to do. My goodness, this is such a process. Green is what I'm calling. I called it the green bumble. You know what? Screw it. We're gonna call it much ado about bee stings. Matcha. Matcha do about bee stings. That's what we're gonna call it. Matcha do about bee stings. That's what we're gonna call it. I can do whatever I want to. I said before that if you can beat me to it, you can have it, but I beat myself to it. I beat you to it too. I'm sorry for misleading you. I did not mean to do that, but we did it. Macho do about bee stings. Macho do about bee stings.
I think that's the longest cocktail name we have, so much to do about bee stings. What do you do about bee stings? I just kind of, I deal with it. I just, I just try to deal with it. I think, I haven't been stung by a bee in a while. I have a very, I don't have a very bad relationship with bees. Previously, like when I was younger, I got stung by a bee by I think once and like the drama queen I am, I was like, I'm staying away from bees. Bees are scary, I don't wanna get hurt by them. And then one time at feeder camp, I decided to sit out in the field right in front, right in between the road and the municipal building that we had our meetings at. And I just kind of sat there in the field couple of flowers around me, just sitting there. And there was a bunch of bees. And I was like, okay, what did I learn in school? Okay, so when a black bear approaches you, you want to scream and get big. When a bigger bear um, approaches you, like a grizzly or whatever, you need to sit there and act quiet and sit there, just so they don't notice you. And so I put my bear skills into action. I did not scream, I took the ladder route, and I sat there and I just watched the bees. And I realized, like, if you just don't touch the bees, you don't bother them, they're not going to bother you either. A couple landed on me, a couple landed on me, I was like, oh my god, I'm really, really tense. But if you just don't bother them, they don't bother you. And here's a really good tip. If you find that a bee or whatever is making its way around you, blow on it. You're going to look like an idiot. But as you, as you sit there going, <laughs> the bee will think it's the wind, and they will go away. I have gotten so aggressive with bees and wasps that had gotten all up in my grill and I will be in public, I will be at my home, I will be at my parents' house and you'll just see me go like <laughs> and the bee eventually goes away. I get a little hot, I get a little hot up here because I hyperventilate and all the air goes woo, but um, the bee will go away. Um, I might have to sit back down on my chair though. We're gonna continue onwards. Speaking of bees, let's do more bees knees. Bees and knees. Knees nuts, bees nuts, D's nuts. We move on. The next color we have is yellow. What do we do? I mean, the green, the matcha was kind of yellow. It's actually a lot more yellow now than it did before, but a, lot, a couple of matcha has kind of sunk to the bottom, so it's kind of getting a little green now. But I was thinking, what do we do for yellow? In the game Bears and Bees, which is kind of where we have loosely taken the idea of the colors of these cocktails, the yellow flower is the sunflower. And so I thought, like, okay, well, what do we do, that, what do we have that's a sunflower? And we were like, maybe we do sunflower seeds? But I was like, nah, like, sunflower seeds don't, at least from my knowledge, don't really have, like, a yellow color that they impart into the liquor that they're in. Although a sunflower gin, or sunflower liqueur, sounds like, could be pretty cool. Hi, Paul Tracy. Back from Texas, Cammy. Yo, nice, Paulie. Nice job. I'm glad you got back safely. I hope it wasn't, hope it wasn't freezing down there. I think the last time that happened to Texas, everything broke. I hope the server stuff went well. I noticed everything went down for a little bit and then came back up. So, this is a good thing. And so we decided to go against. We didn't go with the sunflower route. Instead, I took another uh, tea that we have in our collection, chamomile tea, which I found at least when I make chamomile tea from like the bag and stuff, it imparts a yellowish color onto the tea around it and to the solvent. Um, so we did that. We make chamomile infused gin. So I'm gonna go grab that. It's right over here. I don't have to go very far. Here we go. The chamomile that I have is actually one that I picked up from the uh, flower show, the Philadelphia flower show, I think a year ago when I went, and it's by a company called, it's by a farm called Tooth of the Lion Farm. I subscribed to their email uh, newsletter. It's quite nice. They got a lot of pictures of people on tractors and stuff like that. It just, it's just cool. It's 100% PA grown chamomile herbal tea, Matricaria recutita, which if I had to guess is probably like the scientific name of chamomile, I guess? That would be my guess, at least. Paul says, didn't get without a speeding ticket, as you know, though. Indeed, I did receive that Snapchat. Dude, cops are... Cops are a thing. I feel like it's, it's interesting. Anna has gotten significantly more speed tickets than me in our life, and I swear I move, I, I drive faster than she does. Although what I do, my particular trick, if you want to not get speed tickets like me, not to say that I'm an authority on that, or that I'm any authority at all, to be perfectly honest, is like find a car that's going the speed that you want to go at and just follow them. Don't, don't, don't like tailgate them or anything, but keep a safe following distance and just go their speed. If they move out of the passing lane or whatever, just go ahead of them and hang in front of them. And naturally, if they're like, if they're bothered, maintain the speed. Otherwise, they're going to get mad at you and tailgate you and go around you. It kind of works. Or at least it has worked for me thus far. And I've spent eight years driving so far. Uh, so if I can keep with that for the rest of my life, I'm good. 2 a.m. speed trap. No lights on. Ridiculous. Ugh. People just trying to meet their quotas. In any case, we have a yellow, a very, very yellow looking gin here. And I will actually say like of all the infusions that uh, we did this evening, this one of them was the one that I think got the color spot on. It has got a very, very nice yellow tinge to it. Um, I think that comes across pretty well on the stream camera, but I'll add a little bit of light because um, the lighting is not optimized for this kind of example here, but it is, it is yellow. It has got a nice yellow color to it. Um, if I turn it around and stuff, I'm, I'm trying to maneuver this. It, it, it's yellow. 
I assure you, it is yellow. And it's a very nice yellow, too. And so, what I want to see is whether this smells like chamomile. Because, for, for hon honestly, the butterfly pea flower infusion didn't really smell too much of what I would consider to be butterfly pea flower. I think it just kind of smelled mostly of gin, if I was being perfectly honest. The matcha infusion smelled mostly of matcha, not really much of gin, which was actually kind of a surprise to me. And so I'm really, really curious to see whether or not the chamomile tea, technically a tisane, tisane, because tea is technically the leaf, from the tea plant, which has many different genuses and stuff, I think. Uh, anyway, semantics. But um, I wanted to see if it actually like um, smells like chamomile. So let's let's give it a smell. I'll give it a taste. See how things are looking. Um, the tea bag is kind of stuck to the top of this little mason jar that I used here. And it's actually pretty cool too. This particular chamomile, like I don't know if y'all have ever seen like chamomile the flower, but they're these tiny little um, they're these tiny little things. Actually, I th this is this is really really cool looking. So I'm gonna zoom back in on it because it's I think it's just really kind of cool. Let's see. Let's go back in on it. This is chamomile. This is chamomile, like the little flower. They're like tiny, 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 tiny little flowers. I'm gonna try to see if I can get a nice view on that. Um, apologies, you're gonna get a nice view of my chest too. This is this is what chamomile looks like. It's like a tiny, tiny little flower, and it's like the cutest looking thing. They got um, and they they smell they smell pretty good. You know, you know chamomile there. I don't know if that's focusing. Focus. Focus your damn camera. Come on. Come on. There we go. This is chamomile. It's a tiny little chamomile flower. And I have just a bunch of it in this little container here. It is. It's nice. Honestly, I have never liked the taste of chamomile. I've never really been a fan of chamomile, at least the tea that I get from the bags. But this this particular batch of chamomile, ooh, that's too far. Um, I think it's actually very pleasant. I would say that it's got a I would say it's almost like the, the smell that I'm getting off of it, instead of being more farmy, I found that chamomile in the past, at least for me, has a very farmy, very hay, very fieldy smell to it, and I'm not really a big fan of that. It reminds me of home, the rural areas, which is not necessarily a bad thing in some regards, but it gets a little, it's like a, it reminds me of um, the pumpkin patch that we used to go to every single year. It was on a farm, it had horses and cows and hay bales and stuff, and just reminds me of that smell, which I'm not a huge fan of. It's got a certain must to it that I think is appreciable. But this, this stuff here, Although it also it smells like chamomile, like that kind of like hay barn like smell. Individually, I would dare even to say that they almost smell a little and I'm just making sure it's not I'm not getting confused by my fingers is it smells almost kind of like a pina colada. And it may sound like really, really weird, but there's a little bit of pineapple in there, and there's a little bit of like almost coconutty in there. I think but less on the coconut, more so on the pineapple. And I'm just like, I don't know why. But like that's the that's the smell that I get from this these little chamomile flowers, which is actually pretty cool. Now the the question then remains: um, Do we get the same thing with the chamomile uh, infusion of the gin? Let's find out. Oh yeah, interesting. So. That thing that I described that was kind of akin to like pina colada, it's still kind of there. It's not much, it's not as like a sweet smelling thing. It's not much pineapple, it's not much coconut. It's a lot more husky if I had to give that uh, particular um, observation, if I had to put a particular word to it. But I would also say <coughs> when I'm not helping alcohol, oh my goodness, <laughs> excuse me, um, is that it also smells like, it's, it's kind of soapy. It smells like soap. Like, I don't know, I don't know what kind of fragrance or whatever that, like, Dove soap uses, but it smells like, like, hand soap. I don't know if, like, chamomile hand soap exists, but if it doesn't, this particular flavor combination, this particular smell combination, I think would go really, really well with it. I would absolutely wash my hands with this, and technically can, because it's alcohol. What does it taste like, though? Oh, that is so interesting. Okay. Hmm. There was something different going on there. Sims Jeff, what's up? Get the nose drunk again. Dude, if you're not huffing alcohol, that's probably a good thing, to be perfectly honest. I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah, so the, um, oh. Okay. Where I stood before saying that the chamomile almost kind of smells like a pina colada, it almost kind of tastes like a pina colada. Like, if there was a pina colada that evoked the feeling of a rural farm and not, like, the tropical coast side, that's what I would describe this smell and taste as. It's almost like it's a pina colada. It's like, mm, it's, it's interesting. 
I don't know. I really, I really want to say that it doesn't taste like that because it really sounds weird, but it kind of does. It's a little, it's a little bit, a little creamy. It's a little pineapple-y. It's a little coconutty-ish. It's like, it's interesting. And it also, at the same time, also smells like a farm, which raises either cows, horses, um, sheep, you name it. Oh, and goats. There were also goats there too, hidden behind an electric fence, which was right, which was right next to my middle school. And my goodness, I spent every single day in gym class thinking. What would happen if I touched that electrical fence? I kind of want to see if it's actually an electrical fence. Um, I was dissuaded. I never actually touched the electrical fence, but I could go back anytime. I'm an adult now. It's a little mambo number five, as opposed to mambo number six, which I'm sure you're already aware of. Mambo number four was all right, but number five really was the one that hit the spot. This, I'd say, is a little mambo... Um, Cup like Mambo 4.7 if I had to put a number to it. It's not quite five. It's not quite the the supremeness that five was I don't think it's next generation like a six, but I wouldn't say that we're regressing per se 4.7 Mambo 4.7 this chamomile gin is going to go into our next gin infusion based cocktail that we're that we're calling It's the yellow flower. We've got a couple different flowers. This one is called the air beneath my wings beneath my wings because we work with bee puns around here because I love to see the grimaces on people's face when I make them. So the, this one was kind of inspired by going back to what we discovered or what I had researched about the butterfly pea flower before. Butterfly pea flower is supposedly close in pre flavor profile to chamomile. So I was like, okay, what kind of flavor prof what kind of flavor combinations go with chamomile? And on that list was, as a review from before, there was like mango, kind of those tropical fruits, there was mint, and there was also citrus. The blue flower cocktail that we did, bear in the bee blue bee, bee bear blue, bear in the bee blue flower, if I can read and pronounce and enunciate, um, was more, it had, it had blue curacao in it, so it was more attempting to push that kind of citrus regime of the butterfly pea flower. The purple bee's knees, which is a bee's knees using purple gin, which we made ourselves, uses lemon, also kind of evoking that combination of you take the citrus and the chamomile e flower and you put them together and see what you find. This one's actually chamomile -y. and it was interesting. When I saw that chamomile goes well with mango, specifically, it, like, it was like the top one, it was like, chamomile goes great with mango. I was like, why mango? Now that I've got this kind of, uh, ink, this understanding that like, the chamomile's almost pina colada-y, it's tropical. It's tropical, not bayside, but countryside, and I totally understand why that would go well with mango. And if I had anything mango-like back here, I feel like I totally would have gone into that, knowing what I do now about chamomile-infused gin. And now that I know about that, I hope there's a little le left afterwards because I gotta try that at some point if I get my hands on something mango-y. Anyway, I digress. One of the flavors there that we also hadn't ex particularly explored down yet was mint, menthol, if you will. And so I was like, okay, well, what if you do, what if you mix the mint and the chamomile together? Together. So that's exactly what we're doing. I thought that you could probably use like a creme de menthe here, which is just a very sugary, spearminty uh, liqueur. You could also use like a peppermint schnapps type thing, which is pepperminty and sugary. But I kind of wanted something a little bit different. I thought, well, I have a particular spirit in my collection that a friend got me from Puerto Rico. Thank you so much, uh, Annie. I appreciate that. Uh, from a, uh, a distillery called Don Q. And they have specifically a mojito liqueur. And it's got, it's got mintiness to it. It, it's got limeness to it. That's what a mojito is. It's got that mint and it's got that lime. Put it together. What do you find? Mojito. And so I was like, okay, lime is citrus. Mint is mint. Let's try to use a mojito liqueur. I don't know if this is necessarily the most accessible thing for people. So if you have creme de menthe, I would honestly recommend using that too. Creme de menthe mostly. I don't know if I would go with peppermint. Although, honestly, whatever floats your boat, go for it. Mr. Paul Tracy says, anyways, oh yeah, yeah, don't go 94 on a 55. That cop was definitely looking for a quota and just got me going in a restable speeds, but gave them the ticket. He was probably too nice. Only two points too, which is too low for what I did. Bro felt bad for real. Seriously though, God. The whole light, the points on the license thing is a lot, but then again, then again, I will say, you were going pretty damn fast down that road, so if there's luck in the air, if there's serendipity playing in your favor in your court this, uh, that night, um, clearly there was. So that's how we're gonna do it. I call it the air beneath, the air beneath my wings, because I think mint kind of reminds me of the air, and this is the air beneath my wings. I have no wings. Uh, the, the wings are still growing back. My hair hasn't quite gotten there yet. So let's get right into it. My chamomile off to the side. I've got my clear glass that I'm going to put things in, uh, which has a little bit of a pre at the bottom of it. So I'm going to dump that out. It's a, it's a little weird. I'm going to wash that out with a little bit more water. 
see how that goes. C, it's a highway, but it's a 55. It should be at least 65. Kind of weird. Well, I guess we're down to Texas. I don't know what the speeds are like in Texas. Usually, I assume no matter where I go that 65 is the speed limit, and I, I go 65 um, or 70. Um, but then again, you know, you live your life the way that you want to. This was Bennington, Vermont. Oh, this is up in Vermont? That's actually kind of confusing come to think of it. I don't think the, I think the roads are faster up there. Anyways, so... To your glass, if you are creating this cocktail yourself, which you might not be, that's fine. Take two ounces, 60 milliliters, of your infused gin. I have mine as chamomile. I think it works. I think it works very, very well. So let's go for it. Two ounces of your chamomile infused gin and try not to spill any of it. You're doing a great job not spilling it. Well, you're kind of spilling it. It's fine. Two ounces. And it actually did come out really yellow. Oh, that was the sign from the whole thing. This is the yellow flower because it came out yellow. It actually kind of looks like um, I didn't drink enough water. It's great. It's pretty good. Put that to the side. That's pretty, pretty good. I was not expecting that one to come out the way that it did. Just a reminder so far. This is the yellow flower. We made a blue bee's knees. We made a purple bee's knees. It's no different than the original. And then we've also got the green bee's knees over on the side over there. It's below checked. That's where it is. In addition to the two ounces or 60 milliliters of chamomile tea that you have in your glass, we are also going to add, you guessed it, three quarters of an ounce or a little bit more if you're using regular honey. Um, honey. Honey, honey. Sugar, do 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 do. Ooh, honey, honey, do 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 do. You are my honey bee, my sweet little honey bee. Nice. All right, and we're gonna let that sit there for a hot second as I figure out what the next ingredient will be. I know what the next ingredient is. It's this thing here. Did I do that correctly, actually? Um, yes, it was three quarters of each of them. Mint, honey, mint leaves. It gets complicated more towards the... The next two co cocktails, the red one and the pink one, are a little more complicated. The ratios are not exactly the same there. And this honey here in particular is a very, very dark, like, amber honey. It's got a very dark, robust color to it. It's got a pretty robust flavor, too. So it's going to change the way that the cocktail looks. But I think it's going to come out a little orangey and yellow in the end. We're taking our creative liberties. If you wanted something that was, like like pastel colored well that's that's not the cocktails that i'm making this evening it's just uh i feel like the, if you try to go for the color over the flavor then you're gonna wind up going and veering off in a different direction dare i say at 94 miles an hour and a 55 um and kind of miss the ball you know and so i figured i'd go for kind of something more flavorful on this one anybody can make a cocktail that looks like a color uh if you know what spirits to buy and throw into it whether or not it tastes good and is a nice pairing is a different story and you don't have to there's no need for you to hold yourself to that standard but um, I'm the one putting on the performance. So I'm going to keep with it. So let's do three quarters of an ounce of our mojito liqueur. Let's go with that. Um, I still got a little bit of honey in there. So let's do a nice little pour. Let's go for it. Three quarters of an ounce are about 22 milliliters of mojito liqueur. If you don't have a mojito liqueur, that's totally okay. You could also do like a, a mint liqueur as well. Actually, I saw the yellow there for a moment. Oh, it actually does look kind of yellow. It's kind of cool. It's got the color scheme of if you've ever seen those Coca-Cola gummies, it looks like that. Really do. Mr. Paul Tracy's also saying that, I mean, in Vermont at 2 a.m., there's nobody on the road except for the, some, like, semi-trucks and whatnot. Everyone would, would speed at that hour in Vermont. Lots of reasons to think into why he let uh, Mr. Paul Tracy off. Vermont plates, 2 a.m., on the road, Connecticut license, told him the Vermont address is right off the top of the head and the zip code, and he was basically a Vietnam, uh, Vietnam, whoa, Vermont citizen. It's interesting. It's something I learned about Vermont, it's a very interesting place. In Killington, I believe, you can walk out your front door naked and walk around the city completely in the buff. Um, but you can't get naked in the streets. It's only if you walk out of your own house. This is something that my brother told me. He also lives up in Vermont. Mr. Cosmo. All right, and that's pretty much it. That's all that goes into this particular iteration of the Bee's Knees. It's your honey. Uh, whoa. It's your gin-infused... It's your gin-infused chamomile. No, no, no. Flip that. It's your chamomile-infused gin. You add some honey in there, and you also put your mojito liqueur or mints or whatever you might have in there. It's a wonderful combination. It's great. Honestly, not gonna lie, Vermont girls are probably the ugliest in the country, though. Pain. Then again, think about it this way. You haven't seen the rest of the world. Ugly could merely be the top of a much, much deeper iceberg. But who really knows? You retain that information on being naked in Vermont? Yes. Yes, I did. You never know where we might end up one day. It's all about knowing the laws of the land. And I wouldn't say that Vermont is totally not a place that I would see myself winding up. Speaking of things that are naked, let's get naked. Please excuse me for a moment while I completely strip my clothes below the bar. I'm sorry, I led you on. I was just grabbing some ice. 
If you want content like that, please subscribe to my OnlyFans, of which I don't have, but enough of if, if enough people say, come on, man, and we can do it. Oh, well, don't fall, please. My ruler almost fell back the other direction. It's great. It's wonderful. Oh my god. It's too cold. I would never live in Vermont. It's true. People skiing in the bikinis though. Dude, it's a it's a different kind of mentality. It's a different kind of life. I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, to be perfectly honest, Vermont's too cold for me. I don't think I'd do it. It's it's just too much. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in my uh, measure in jigger because I kinda wanna clean things out. And hopefully while I turn the other direction this doesn't fall over. Great. Thank you for disrespecting the laws of gravity for just a moment. Let's give it a shake. Let's go for it. But before January and February, indeed, gets very freaking cold. Uh, yeah. Philly's pretty cold, too, and I don't even like that. I want to go south, man. I'm getting the hang of this, I think. How we doing? Oh, it's looking pretty good. I really like to do this to the honey because it's sticky and viscous. So I like to really toss it around a little bit. All right, nice. Let's grab the sacrificial yoga blocks. Who's gonna die today? It's not me, I'm still alive and kicking. Let's grab a glass from my little thing over here, put that on top and, whoa, looks at it, look at that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say something, but I, Whew, air, Whew, air beneath my wings. Got no words. Got no words for this one. Where are you? There you are. Ah, uh, it's a little too far. Let's go out a little bit. A little, little tiny bit. Great. Excellent, excellent. January 2022, every day was below 15 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know. You're not really helping my case here, P. Tracy. I don't know if I want to go back to Vermont ever again. No, nah, just kidding. I have to. My bro's up there. Oh, I need to clean off my little strainer. I didn't do that. I gotta do a little cleaning in the strainer. It's getting a little frothy. A little frothy from the matcha. Speaking honestly. Very fro that's a very frothy strainer. I don't want to use a frothy strainer on this. That's nasty. There we go. Less frothy e than before. All right, let's see what color that winds up turning. Oh, we're also going to garnish this with some mint sprigs, so I'm going to have to run to the window to get that. There you go. Hey, that is kind of yellow. It also looks like mustard, but it's a little less mustardy than the other one. It has no crema. Noticeably, it does not have any crema at the top, uh, like the other one did. Hmm. That is really, really cool. I'm gonna get more of that. I feel like this is gonna be a really good one. That last one was a good one. This one's gonna be a good one. Dare I say, they're all good ones. Take a look at that. Take a look at that one. Um, I need to go get a little mint sprig for it. It's looking pretty good so far. That's not that bad at all. I'm gonna zoom out there. That was pretty cool looking. Kind of like that. Uh, you'll have to excuse me for a moment. I need to garnish this with a mint sprig, and I actually need to go to my other window in order to get that mint sprig, because um, I did not feel like dragging my entire mint plant, my mint monster over here. So please hold for a moment while I yell at you from across the room. La -di -da, da -di -da -di -da -di -da. And the bad vibes go rolling along. I have a mint sprig now. Um, I'm just gonna put it, put that inside. That's how we're gonna garnish it. It's minty. Wow, that is a really. That's too much, my friend. That is too much. You need to chill the fuck out. Get back a little bit. Come on. There we go. There we go. What I miss? What did I miss? The Christmas improv. Thanksgiving in Vermont again? Maybe. We'll see. I gotta come back to learn how to ski. I still do. This Christmas is probably gonna go to the Tampa to his parents' place. Kind of shit place for Christmas. They plan everything super last minute. Yeah, we do. Yeah, the cat, the, my mother, Mama Calf, Ms. R.S. Calf, is a very nice lady. She's, she's good on a date, no cap. She's a wonderful woman. Honestly, she's the kind of person you take on a date and you're like, oh, my food's not that good. Like, I don't think I really like it. It's making my tummy hurt. She'd get you the whole meal for free. She's that kind of woman. And man, I love her. And my goodness, what an excellent person person to learn from all right that's what we got here it's the air beneath my wings i really wish i had like honeycombs to garnish some of this stuff with but um i just i just don't have it this time unfortunately i wasn't a, i don't know where to get honeycomb within a 24 hours notice unless amazon ships in which they might that's a lovely looking cocktail that's so cute looking oh i love it oh i love it i love that i get to keep all these 
these oh my god all these pictures and stuff which color bee drink will give the quickest buzz 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 um oh my god let's think what do we have so far we have empress gin they're all very ginny i'm gonna admit that the one that's most alcoholic is probably gonna be uh it was that first one i think so far the blue one the blue one was pretty alcoholic not gonna lie if you're the kind of person who really digs sour stuff you should go with the purple one um the green one was sweet actually even the blue the first blue one was pretty was pretty sweet too um i don't know we haven't tried this one yet i think this one might actually be the one we'll see the other ones get a little yeah i think it's probably gonna be this one if i had to, if i had to pick one of them it is probably going to be this one so let's remove the sacrificial um yoga blocks what did we sacrifice our sobriety maybe we'll see buzz 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 this is what we have oh no no my book's coming off the wall don't fall ah my reference <laughs> let's try it what does it smell like oh it smells like mint god i freaking love the smell of mint i went home and uh I, this is not mint related this is basil related i went home my parents deck has a gigantic basil plant that is just like flowering up the wazoo it is getting very pollinated out there because it's in the middle of the forest um my basil plant is sad there is no pollination in my apartment i am not going to take the time to rub my ass all over my plants just so they can procreate no thanks yeah that, i'm just not that kind of gent but it smells like mint i like that wow okay I have no idea what to make of that. Huh. That is a really interesting flavor combination. I wasn't quite prepared for it. It's not... I'd say it's too sweet. For what we have going here, I think this is too sweet. I mean, it's got honey in it, so it actually kind of makes sense. So let's... Let, let me... I need to take another sip of this. Wow, what an interesting combination. It's a good combination, though. Okay, so break it down we have honey i can taste the honey in there it is a very very sweet honey all of the i'd say 90 80 to 90 percent of the sweetness is coming from the honey it's not bad it's not bad there is also chamomile in there the top of my mouth is getting air of chamomile it tastes like i'm sipping cold chamomile tea it exists it is there it is not necessarily coexisting with the honey super well and then there's the mint it hits me immediately it's right at the front of my mouth right at the front of my face and it's just like wow you're drinking a mojito a eh? um yes it's just really really interesting like the flavors that come out are absolutely mint and honey and the other one chamomile and it all just exists in the same place sometimes i feel like Sometimes I have these moments where I reflect upon like the complexity of the cocktail and I think like, are the flavors supposed to meld together? Are they really supposed to completely dissipate and become something entirely new? Not always. I guess it really depends on what your preferences are. I think it's kind of cool that I like my flavor palette can actually piece out all these pieces and they, they're not, they're not exactly friends with each other. They're kind of button heads a little bit, but they are coexisting. And that is a really, really interesting thing. That is a very, very complex flavor. And I don't exactly know how to interpret that. It's also kind of cool. The top of the glass now kind of has this like swirling effect from the, um, I guess, what little particulates are actually in there. Um, it is really, really cool looking. Wow, I missed whatever was happening. Whatever was just happening over here, I missed most of it. Really? And I, I didn't know much about you. Where are you from? Oh my God! Just never get a Drexel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. No, no. She's my, she's my girl. I love her. Uh, we grew up uh, in Jersey. Uh, we met in high school. Uh, she went South Jersey for her cool, her school and stuff. Uh, I went to the big old city. Uh, I learned to become an engineer, um, so I became an engineer. And then she missed me so much, and I kind of miss her too. So she came she came here to live with me, and uh, that's got, that's kind of where we are. That's why we're still in Philly, Philadelphia. Um, I like to drink alcohol on stream, so uh, throw bits at me and follow me and uh, subscribe to me and uh, give me all your money and your firstborn child and. Um, Oh, and, and, and while we're at it, while we're sacrificing birth for our children, don't forget, don't forget, um, the sacrificial yoga block. Do it on here. God, Abraham, don't, don't take from them. Sacrifice your child. The yoga block. Thank you for coming to my Twitch channel. I appreciate you. Anyway, where do we want to be in the future? Yeah, we want to be out of the city, somewhere where it's warm, I think, if I'm speaking honestly there. I don't, I don't like... 
I like this city. It's a wonderful place. I can walk everywhere. I can bike everywhere. It feels like the entire world is within my grasp while I sit here in the city. However, it's just like... I miss, the, I miss the countryside. I miss the countryside. I don't like the cold. And so I want to go somewhere that is warm and in the country area. Not like not like I'm baking out in the sun, but like something like I can put out a lawn chair uh, and just not feel like if I took my shirt off that I'd regret it. Like that's the kind of, that, that's where I want to live. Um, what those exact details are, I'm not super sure. Texas feels, Texas feels pretty far south. I don't know. Um, but actually I was speaking to somebody about like opportunities out there and you know, Silicon's huge in Texas. Silicon's huge out in California. Who knows where we might be in the future. Um, however, all this, all this stuff here, this whole cocktail thing, I hope it never goes anywhere. So no matter where we go, stay tuned. That is really good. Wow. That is just a very, it's pleasantly complex and I just did not see that coming. That's like, that's wild. Uh, air beneath my wings. Another, I call it, I guess we call it an original here. I didn't base it off of anything. I just did some Googling and stuff. Usually what I'll try to do too, like just because I, just because I quote unquote invented something by using my own logic to put things together, doesn't mean that it's, it's not out there already. And dare I say, I'm not gonna go around taking credit for things that somebody else did already. Although, I don't really know. It's a, it's a tough thing. I made this one. I researched it myself, so they can't take that away from me. I'm gonna pour things into my trash bin, get ready for the next cocktail. We've got two more this evening using infused gins. The chamomile infused gin was a nice guest to have. Very interesting. I want to explore this more later. This has been that's been super duper cool. But it's going off to the side. We've got two other infusions headed your way um, in a couple minutes as we prepare for the next cocktail. So. What is Anna mastering in? Uh, te technically, she's not mastering. She's um she's doing her, her doctorate of physical therapy in... I just said it. I said she's doing her doctorate of physical therapy in. And I already said the physical therapy part. It's really, really cool. She's got one of her clinicals coming up. I think it's over in Jersey or whatever, which is kind of cool. But we got to figure out the parking situation. Both of them are in Jersey. Hey, what you doing down there? You want on cosplay stuff? Yeah, I'm going to go outside and spray paint this piece of yarn. It's so cold outside, though. You'll die. As long as it's not raining. Don't die out there. I'll miss you if you do. And then the ver the various people of this world who you may help will no be will no be helped. They no be helped if you go. I don't plan to. I'm not even gonna go over to the door. No. You probably didn't hear it, but as soon as I locked the door, I heard from a distance, what the hell? It's not locked, I promise. Or maybe. We'll see. So Cameron's going to be making the big money. It really depends whether we stay in engineering and stuff like that. I don't know where I'll be in a year or two. If this cocktail stuff takes off in a different direction, who knows what we'll be doing. We're all just trying to stay happy in this world. Engineering's awesome and stuff, but like, I don't know. The, the jobs, get str jobs are stressful. That's the startup life, man. Startup life. Stressful as fuck, but it's rewarding. I will say, I am learning a shit ton at the job that I am now. I freaking love my coworkers. Every single one of my coworkers are just wonderful, wonderful people. Like, man, the fact that like this will probably not be forever is something that I have to come to terms with a little bit. It's just been, it's been super duper cool. Oh, I will also say about the air beneath my wings, the yellow flower bees knees cocktail. It, the chamomile sticks around. The chamomile and the honey stick around. The honey I'm just used to at this point, but the chamomile is also sticking around and I like it. It's very, very good. I like that. Oh, and I also need to update my board back here so we keep things uh, up to speed. I, we're kind of getting blocked on this side, but don't worry. When the video comes out afterwards, I will completely relabel everything. We'll share them on Instagram. There's other places that we put this stuff. I don't, honestly, we're kind of we're kind of all over the place if we're speaking honestly here. Um, but you know what? Eventually we get it. Slowly but surely, we get our shit together. And eventually when we get our shit together, um, maybe we'll be happy. Who knows? Who knows, really? Happiness is a fickle thing. I'm happy right now. I'm happy that I get to stream with you. I, I am definitely at one of my happiest when I'm behind this camera doing things like this. It's just, it's just fun. P. Tracy says, anyways, yeah, Texas is nice as long as you are in Dallas. Or I've heard Austin is pretty good, but I don't really know. I've had, I had a friend of mine that lived down in Texas a little while. Um, same with Washington, D.C., North Virginia, Georgia. You worked for the star, jerked for, <laughs> I jerked. <laughs> Yeah, I jerked for P. Tracy startup too. And I'm jerking for this one too. <laughs> 40 hours a week, sometimes more. Um, but I'd say definitely avoid California unless it's a really good opportunity. Reno, Nevada, Reno, Nevada. Decent, pretty good too. Yeah, like 
California is just like, damn, it's freaking expensive out there. I just feel, I just hear horror stories of people being like, I'm gonna make it in Silicon Valley. I'm moving off to California, and I can't afford my rent. I had to move back home because, uh, just, you know, people taking advantage of like, um, like, um, what's the term? Interns and stuff like that. It's kind of, it's kind of deplorable. It's kind of sad. But in any case, oh yeah, I don't know where we'll wind up being. I think with the type of skills that I've amassed, whether it be with the live streaming stuff, the bartending stuff, the engineering stuff, the other stuff, I'm a versatile kind of person. I could probably make it anywhere. And I like to do re remote work stuff. And I know we'll always have my boys at Spark Toast for me. I love you guys. Seriously, though. All right, let's move on to the next cocktail. Which cocktail color is that? Oh, I didn't write it on the board. It's the red one. But I have to write it the other cocktail. Air... B... Neath my wings. Great, it's the red one. What's in the red one? I'm super glad that you asked. Come on over to the red one. We have here ruby oolong tea, which I was under the impression that maybe would make a red a red cocktail thing here, and it totally did, and I love it. Silicon Valley call overrated, totally. That's Nevada and Texas are growing. Denver and Phoenix as well. Crept crepes eight one one. You're cute. No, you're cuter. Thanks for popping in. But I get I put some red oolong tea, ruby oolong tea, into some gin, and it lo and behold turned it red. Who knew? I was honestly I was honestly kind of scared. As I was making all the infusions and stuff last night, I was trying to determine which cocktail is going to be designated which color flower. And I was like, this one is going to be the red one. And then the next, the next thing that we have infusing is going to be some rose petals. And I was like, oh, but rose petals are like really red. Maybe this one should be the pink one because by the time that I looked at it, it really wasn't this red. Um, actually, let's get a let's get a let's get a zoom on how red this thing is. It's very it's it's a vibrant like dark orange and stuff. Um, and I was like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna be red enough. I don't know if I can call this the red one. So I relabeled this one as the pink one. And much to my surprise, when I got back from work today, it was very 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 red. Take a look at that. It's got a nice orangey color to it. It's really, really cool looking. Um, so that's what we wind up doing. It's great. It's jam. It's jamming, man. It does really look like jam. Honestly, this is one of the ones, this is kind of now getting into a territory. So like I kept the more interesting ones toward the end of the stream because these are things that I didn't really know what was going to happen with these cocktails. To be perfectly honest, I had no idea that the matcha infused gin was going to take us where we actually were with it. It was super duper pleasant. Who knew matcha and almond go super duper well today they're incredible the chamomile and the mint also went very interestingly well together i don't exactly remember what ruby oolong tea tastes like uh the description on the back here i get it from a place called the spice and tea exchange every single time i go on vacation the description goes like this Ruby Oolong Oolong Tea. This rare Thai Oolong is known for its luminous infusion and rich, complex flavor. The tea leaves are slow baked to create a full-bodied cup with deep notes of cacao, chocolate, cherry, and toasted hazelnut. So, under my impression, this is going to have a nutty component to it. It's going to have a pruny sort of raisin component to it. And it's also going to have a chocolatey coffee type component with it. And so as I was doing my research for what goes really, really well with Ruby Oolong is uh, I, I did actually I did like a, a it was kind of all over the place, but perfectly honest. When I looked up ruby oolong tea, or just oolong tea in general, the internet was saying things like, it goes really, really well with meat. It goes really, really well with fish. It goes really, really well with salty things. And I was like, so I'm putting salt in this cocktail? And I was like, okay. So I put down saline as an ingredient, and I was kind of going through the rest of them, just like, what else do you do to make the cocktail savory? You're like, nah, there must be something else here. So allow me to walk you through what my train of thought was. If oolong is to salty savory, salty savory goes to salt. Salt goes to caramel. Salted caramel, a lovely combination. Salted caramel, caramel to like sugar, caramel to like syrup. Okay, caramel to syrup. What kind of syrup? Maple syrup. What kind of maple syrup? Maple syrup in a liqueur. So that's what I settled on. This is four to five steps removed from whatever the original flavor pairing was, but damn, I wanted to try it anyway. So this is going to be called, this one's called the 100 Maple Wood, and it combines Ruby Oolong infused gin with maple liqueur and cinnamon liqueur, because like, oh, and also honey, duh. Uh, because like, I feel like, I feel like cinnamon maple would be a nice combination, so I just, 
fuck it, I went for it. So that's what I was going for. I was like, ah, damn, yeah. Honestly, bro, what pisses me, what pisses Paul Tracy off about the West, which he's learned more in, la in the last year, is that the federal government owns so much in the Western states, like no, like more than 50% of some states' land in Nevada makes living costlier and cause because of the less land and stuff like that. Sims Jeff says this sounds like a chocolate-covered cherry drink. It does kind of feel like that, right? Now that I think about it. I did actually garnish this one with a cherry, but I had caught chocolate in the other one. Now, well, hmm. To be perfectly honest, when I looked up ruby oolong, I didn't read the back of this container, and I'm actually kind of rethinking my recipe now. I don't really want to do something mapley. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right to go down the maple path when it clearly says hazelnut, sherry. Actually, there's a little thing on here. Does it actually say sherry? Oh, I'm sorry. No, it doesn't say sherry. It says cherry. Cocoa, cherry, toasted hazelnut. All right, we're gonna wing this one. We're on the red. We're on the red flower. It's ruby oolong and God knows what else. Let's make a cocktail, shall we? Let's experiment with it. What I know for sure is that we need two ounces of your infused gin. So I'm gonna work on the easy part, which is this. Actually, amazing call there, Sims Jeff. Bumblebee wing it. Oh, totally. Amazing call there. I feel like if you hadn't said again cherry and cocoa i wouldn't have gone back to this and been like nah we should change this sometimes you have that mentality of like oh we're improvident we gotta go forward yes and roll with it but sometimes you can take a step back and be like you know let's rethink things a little bit let's go for it uh, i don't want to call this the hundred maple wood anymore for now we are gonna cut the name hundred maple wood and we're gonna just gonna call it the red flower bee's knees and just see where that takes us let's go for it Two ounces or 60 milliliters of you are your infused red ruby oolong gin. What does it smell like? You never took out the chocolate. I never took out the chocolate? Oh my god, I didn't take out the chocolate! Oh my god! Anna, thank you! I thought you wanted that. I did want the chocolate. I have a chocolate block over here, and I have my grater to boot. I have a cheese grater. I have a grater. Now we're good, we're good. Thank you, dear. Oh, I almost forgot about that. It is kind of... How would I describe that? It smells tea -y. Tea -y. It's tea -y. It's tea -y. It's tea -y. It's very tea like Oh, Anna's going to smell it. Here you go, Dave. It's ruby oolong. Ruby oolong oolong tea. It says oolong twice on the cover. What do you think? It smells like... Um, what teas are there? There's like black, white... There's tons of teas. Well, those are various different types of teas, yes. What would you say? It smells like an Earl Grey. It smells like, like an almost Earl Grey. Dark, uh, like a, a black tea. Like one of those classic English teas that black you have tea. at tea time. I think Anna's getting some English breakfast vibes here. Like some, yeah, some of her breakfast vibes tea. There we go. English That's breakfast it. tea supposedly has like those O's to like bergamot, which is a fruit that I've never tried. It's supposedly a citrus. Very interesting. I think it's actually... It is very, it reminds me of wood. It's it's woody, it's it's nutty. It's nut, it's nut, but like, not like I'm biting into the nut, tee -hee. Um, It's more like I'm smelling it. I, it's like I cracked the nut open and I'm taking a smell of what it smells like when I crack the nut. Bar, out of context, take that for a spin. Cam thoughts on Utah, Chief. My thoughts on tea, on bleh, Utah? I don't know anything about Utah. Utah, 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 tee -hee. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I kind of like that smell. It smells to me like, I feel like I'm not very good at describing things that smell like tea as tea, but I'd say there's some cherry notes in there. I'd say there's some nut notes in there. And I honestly might just be biased because of what I read on the label. So like, if you have access to Ruby Oolong Oolong tea, make, make your own opinion of it. But this is just what I got so far. It's, it's a deep smell. It's almost a savory smell to it. It's not, it doesn't smell sweet. It doesn't smell sour, naturally. It doesn't smell light. It smells robust. It smells a little earthy. That's what I would. That's what I would call it. I'm gonna put you over here just so you have a front row seat. Thank you, Ruby Oolong. What does it taste like, though? Remember, this is this is infused gin. This is not tea. This is alcoholic. Oh wow! Wow! Whoa! Okay. Wowza! Okay. I don't even think that tastes like gin anymore. To be honest. I would honestly say that kind of like what happened with the matcha infusion, this has taken on so many characteristics of the tea that was steeping in it that I, I, I wouldn't even call this, it doesn't even taste like gin anymore. I know the base of it is gin. There's a, there's a bunch more angles to this that I can't quite articulate, but it's almost like somebody took 
ruby oolong oolong tea and poured vodka in it and that's what it tastes like it's just like it's so it's so the solute it's so solute my goodness I look forward to seeing what we do with that. Okay, well, we need two ounces of it. So let's let's not dilly-dally and just go for it. Go for it. Two ounces. How many ounces do we have? We'll see. I have just enough. Two ounces or 60 milliliters for those who are in the Uber system of measurement. I like the metric system. Metric system is cool. I don't like standard SI units. They're just annoying. I don't know who thought it was a good idea. It wasn't me. I love the metric system. Hundreds, tens, thousands. It's perfect. In any case, the next thing that we're going to need is we definitely need to put honey in it. So let's flip my measuring jigger around and add second first, second verse, third verse, same as the first. Um, it's um, it's three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of honey. Uh, if you're using a more viscous honey, some of it's going to get stuck behind. So add a little bit more. Let's go like seven eighths, uh, seven eighths of an ounce or uh, 28, 26 milliliters. I got 26 milliliters there for those who work in the Uber system. And just kind of pour that in and uh, take your time with it. And now that we're taking time with it, let's think about this for a moment. So cherry, cherry. I don't have any cherry liqueurs back here. I have a cherry brandy, um, but to be perfectly honest, I think the cherry brandy, uh, maybe that is called for here. I was gonna say, I feel like Maybe we would have wanted something a little more sugar cherry forward. I don't have any cherry liqueurs back here, but I do have cher like maraschino cherry juice in the fridge. But like that seems a little bit too much. We've got a lot of sweetness coming from the honey already, and I don't necessarily want to overpower this one because it just it just feels special. I feel like it just doesn't deserve that sugar treatment like the other one did. Although it's getting honey in it, that's just unavoidable, and it's already in there, so we can't go back now. Um, so I actually think the cherry brandy might actually be a really really good choice here. But I also want to capture aspects of that chocolate. And and to be perfectly honest, I have creme de caco down here, and I plan on putting creme de caco in uh, the next drink as well. Um, actually, do I have that gar garnish with a maraschino cherry? What was I garnishing this one with? I originally was garnishing this one with... Uh, I can't see what I wrote down. Cinnamon. I was going to put grated cinnamon on it. I think I'm going to switch things around. Yeah, we're gonna garnish this with a maraschino cherry. That's what we're gonna go for. We want that cherry thing there. Um, but also, what else do we, we want to do? Something that evokes either the hazelnut or the chocolate. I kind of want to do something chocolatey. I have chocolate liqueurs in the fridge. They're chocolate cream liqueurs, and I think that's what I'm gonna do. Relative, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna combine the cherry and the chocolate and the honey and the red red the red oolong oolong together. It's gonna be. Um, I put a lot of honey in there. I think I probably should have just done half an ounce, but we're too far gone now, so we're just gonna keep with it. We're also gonna add half an ounce of chocolate cream liqueur. I've got the Godiva in the fridge. I'm gonna go get it in a second. And then I'm also gonna do half an ounce of cherry brandy. Uh, technically, it's called Kirschwasser. It's not a liqueur. It's not a spirit. It's called an eau de vie. Um, which, honestly, I don't even know how to properly articulate what that even means. Um, so what do we do next? Let's go get the cherry brandy. Cherry brandy is down here. Where is that? Oh, I just ripped something off the floor. What did I rip off the floor? Nobody cares. Where's my cherry brandy? There you is. There's my cherry brandy. Cherry brandy that I've got is, uh, it's technically Kirschwasser. It says cherry brandy. It's kind of like you took a cherry, cherry pit, cherry skin, and smelled it. Or kind of let that in water to sit for a little while. It's actually very, very good. I would highly recommend it. This this particular, like Kirschwasser cherry brandy pops up in the most interesting locations, at least from the cocktails that I've done in the past. And it's always pleasant. It's always a very nice experience. So let's take half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of cherry brandy. I'm using some Kirschwasser. I would definitely recommend something that's a little less sugary. Uh, although, honestly, I don't know. We're kind of winging it here. So maybe it will taste better sugary. I'm not really sure. It's got a lovely smell to it, Kirschwasser. I have another. Ah, lovely. Uh, mm -hmm. Next, we need a half an ounce of chocolate liqueur. There's a bunch of different chocolatey things that I have back here. I have creme de caco. I've got uh, coffee-based things like Kahlua. There's probably some other stuff here that I'm not seeing. No, that's pretty much it there. Whoa, I have chocolate bitters as well. And then there's also two different types of chocolate cream liqueurs that I've got in my mini fridge here. And that is white chocolate Godiva and just regular chocolate Godiva. I'm really curious to see what kind of things come out with the cocoa notes. And I know technically it says Keiko on the container. Creme de Keiko would be good here. But I think the, um, the, the Jaquins, the Hawkins of uh, Creme de Keiko, just, it's just too sugary to me. 
Um, and if I'm gonna go sugar, I might as well go with the liqueur that I haven't used yet, which is the Godiva one, so I'm gonna go for that. All right, where are you, buddy? You are right here. Whoa, don't fall down, things are falling. Whoa, things are falling, buddy. whoa! Whoa, 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 calm yourself down there, pal. He whiz. All right, well, it's okay, nothing's broken. Nothing's broken. But look what came out the other side, who came to visit. Godiva, chocolate liqueur. Huh, where did that come from? Nothing happened, everything's fine. We're gonna take half an ounce of this. <laughs> Put it into the glass if I can get it open. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be one of those games. I haven't used this one in a while. Yeah. Oh my goodness, this is a tough one. I may, I may need to go get the rubber glove for this one. Oh, actually I heard it, I heard it. Mm. I gotta do both my hands for this one. It's always tough when the, this is this is why I need to use my cocktail ingredients more often. Otherwise, they get stuck. Oh my God, that is really, really tough. Oh, so embarrassing. What do I have around here that can increase my grip strength? I have a piece of plastic. I have a piece of plastic with some uh, plastic ice cubes in it. It's bubble wrap. I'm gonna use the bubble wrap. It's all about being a creative thinker. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Bubble wrap around the Godiva. Will it open? Will it open? Oh my god, it totally did! Hell yeah. Awesome. All right, you're gonna need half an ounce of chocolate liqueur. That's what we're going with. Is this the right choice? I have no freaking idea. That's what mixology is all about. It's about taking a leap of faith and seeing where you land. And if you break your kneecaps along the way, at least you had fun, I guess. Well, it's certainly not red anymore, but we're going for it. Don't throw that away. That's an invention. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's great. No, it's not. It's not anymore. It's just in the front of the bar. Here, here I'll, I'll prove it to you. No, no, it's not thrown away. What are you doing? <laughs> I was going to go get it for you. No, no, no. I'm going to go get my own bubble wrap. Oh, Jesus. This is fair. I can't help that. <laughs> I need to keep this as a cocktail tool. I'll fix that, says Disney Queen as she comes running up the stairs. <laughs> oh my goodness. Steals my spot. I appreciate your enthusiasm, girl. I have scissors. Yep. Yeah, get those. I have, I have a knife. These are the nice scissors. These are my shitty knife. These don't touch anything but my fabric. Don't backtalk me. I got a bar spoon, woman. I can go get a shitty I will go get a bit. My, my trident bar spoon is downstairs, and it's gold, and it's got spikes on the end of it. I don't have my shitty scissors upstairs. Put that thing away. I got a muddler, too, and I'll use it. I'm not afraid to use it. I'm not afraid to use it. I almost threw something at No, no, no. Don't throw things at me. If you throw things at me, I'm entitled to throw things back. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. Domestic violence is happening here, live. <laughs> That's not okay. It hasn't happened yet. Domestic violence is not okay. It's not a- Whoa! What, what is this? What was that? It's a trash! Run away! She threw the wrapper of the, the what we got Panda Express utensils in. Here's a little ASMR for you folks out there. Anyways, P. Tracy says, hit the woman. No, no, no. You hit the woman. I can't be held responsible if I'm not the one who makes contact. Not approved. Everybody knows that if you're going to hit your woman, you have to go through a long and arduous uh, human resources process. It's, uh, it's, it's legal contracting and stuff like that. It's just it's what we have to deal with in the modern age. Uh, for good reason, though. Otherwise, people get hurt. You don't want people to get hurt. You don't want people to get hurt at all. I need to put a little water into my 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 little my little uh, measuring jigger here so that it starts to um, infuse. Oh my god, dude, we're on the second to last cocktail. We've got one more after this. Man, what a journey it's been so far. I love these cocktail streams. I like I don't, I don't even I don't even like plan for like these long streams anymore. We just kind of see what happens. I knew this was gonna be a long one, but I'm cool with it. All right, we have in this glass half an ounce or 15 milliliters of cherry brandy, half an ounce or 15 milliliters of chocolate cream liqueur, in this case it's Godiva, not the white one, not the dark one, the regular chocolate one. We also have three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of honey and two ounces or 60 milliliters of ruby oolong oolong tea infused gin. So let's see what happens. Let's get our ice cubes. We need a couple of them. Oh, I got some syrup on my thingy. Mmm. 
Mm -mm, tasty. Very, very tasty. I like that. Whoa. Okay, come on. Get out of the thing. Come on. There we go. That was excellent. We love that. Put that there. I need a couple more ice cubes. The tiny ones. Tiny ones. Tiny ice cube. Two tiny ice cubes. One big ice cube. And we're off to the races. Let's see what happens. This one uh, still has a name that we haven't quite determined yet. Um, I think we're so far attached, far detached from bees' knees and whatnot. I think that aside from the fact that it's got honey in it, I don't think we need to focus too much on what may be a bee pun here. But we're gonna try. Think. Chocolate. Cherry. Chocolate cherry. Chocolate cherry bee. Chocolate cherry wasp. Cherry wasp. Cherry wasp. Cherry wasp. Cherry. Cherub. Cherub? No, not cherub. We're gonna think. We're gonna think and shake. We're gonna think on this one. We do. Maybe we go with something more bear related, because the original game is bears and bees. Maybe we do something because bears like honey. Bear? Bear cherry? Cherry bear? Cherry berry? Cherry bear? Hmm. Cherry chocolate bear? Cherry? Cherry berry chocolate. Yeah, that's a stupid enough name. That's what I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it Cherry Berry Chocolate. Except berry is spelled B-E-A-R-Y. I love that. Cherry stems from honeybees. Cherry stems from honeybees. Well, technically speaking, you can't get cherries without pollination. And, you know, without the, you know, it, it kind of, it, it does fit there. I kind of like the really stupid play on words there. It kind of rhymes. It doesn't really fit. Who cares anymore? This is our show. We can do whatever we want to. Stupider cocktail names have been invented. And, not, and don't get me wrong. I don't want to like. I don't want to self degrade my, our creations here. Um, but I would consider the cherry cherry berry chocolate to be a very stupid name. But that's what we're gonna go with. It's called cherry berry chocolate, like a bear, because bears like honey. Yeah. All right. There's a story behind that one. Let's get a cocktail glass. Um, hmm, I need a different type of cocktail glass. What do I want to do? What do I have pairs of up here? Something that's a small-ish container, something that carries not too much of liquid. I actually have some small wine glasses. Um, they got a little bit of text on them, so they're not exactly unbranded. Um, but I think it's gonna go pretty well here. So that's what I'm gonna go, gonna go for. We're gonna get the um, sacrificial yoga blocks. I'm gonna get these little wine glasses in my corner. Hey, how's it going? Put that up on top. Um, they're from the Baylick Winery, 60th anniversary. The winery with a with an European accent. The winery with an European accent. Something about that English just don't make no sense to me. Turn it the other direction. I think I got that back in New Jersey. I think I bought that from a store in New Jersey, I think. Somewhere back in my hometown, I think. Let's give it a zoom. See where we go. We're going to garnish this with a Mesmeraschino cherry and see what happens. It's pretty cool. It's a cool thing that we do around here. Um, let's see. Is that... Yeah, that feels pretty good. I like the way that looks. I think if I can get, like half a length on one of these yoga blocks i would but i don't so this is just gonna, what we're gonna work with this is supposed to be the red flower themed bees knees cocktail i have a pretty good feeling that it's not gonna be red so we'll see what happens wish me luck here we go hey Looks like chocolate. Why did you spill? I freaking hate this strainer, but it's the least thin one that I have. Gotta be more gentle with the stuff that I do. Doesn't really have a, doesn't really fill too much to the line. It works well. You know what? For the purposes that we have, I think that works all right. Honestly, it's not that cool looking, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it tastes. This is an interesting one. I just wanna like, I'd be really sad if the flavors of the, um, if the let me go get the maraschino cherry while we're up here i would be really surprised i'd be really disappointed actually if the flavors of the ruby oolong tea get lost in whatever else we put in here i, I will be very very disappointed if that is the case so i'm just kind of i'm just hoping it's not the case um here's my maraschino cherries here's the thing that i'm going to use to stab it i'm gonna get a red one it's a bamboo skewer this is the thing that i'm gonna use to stab it it's this it's this thing let's go for it no, let's do it on stream yeah whatever let's do it like that there we go. It's looking like liquid caramel, you know? Can't argue with that one. That's kind of in the realm of what we were going for. Or did I get that on the first try? Oh, sweet. That is a very mangled looking cherry. Oh my god. Oh my god. It doesn't even have a... That's a bad cherry. I'm a good cherry. 
Come on. Give me the cherry I want. Come on, buddy. Come on. Dude, dude, dude. I gotta two-hand this. I'm gonna use a knife. I'm gonna find... I see the cherry I want. I see the cherry I want. Mm, there we go. Come on. Stab it. Stab it. Stab it. Yeah, dude. Stab it. All right, cool. I got the cherry that I wanted. That's the cherry I wanted. I just put a knife in my mouth. Please don't do that, everybody. Everybody, <laughs> don't do that. Um, do I have anything smaller that I can put this on? I don't, the bamboo skewer is like really large. Um, no, I don't. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put it on this skewer. I'm gonna orient it a little bit better. There we go. What side do I put that on? There we go. That's in the camera's view. I, I sometimes forget where the camera is. So uh, let's just put a cherry on top. Yeah. All right. No, let's just like let's have it like look like it's floating. Hey, that's actually pretty cool. Looks like it's floating on top. Oh my god. Well, the, the camera is not angled super well for that. Man, I'm getting all the fun back here. One second, one second, one second, one second, one second. Let's do, uh, let's do, let's do, uh, let's remove one of the sacrificial uh, blocks of yoga. Uh, put it down here. Uh, whoa, something fell. It's cool. It's all right. Take a look at this. It kind of looks like a sundae. It's floating on top. That's so cool. I like that. That's not red. What's going on here? Cheer, 10 Dolores. My goodness, that's 10 things coming this way. I forgot that you cheer. I think I need to set up alerts for cheers. That's a new thing. That's a new Twitch thing. Oh my God, Sims. Dude, Jeff, my bro, my heart. I'm gonna buy more maraschino cherries with this because I'm running low. Oh, I can also buy more gin too. Yes, I can make more gin infusions. Oh, what do we do for things like this? I forget what we do. Oh, we do balloons. I need a Sharpie marker. Where are my Sharpie markers? Here they are. Found my Sharpie markers. Hey, oh. I forgot the cheering was a thing now. You know, as a content creator on the Twitch platform, I have been asked by the corporation owned by Amazon, the Bezos company, Twitch, to provide feedback on the cheering experience and how I, the streamer, feel about the cheering experience. You, as the viewer of the Twitch platform experience involving the live stream that is placed before you, also have a right to such um, accusations, comments, concerns, and you can pose them to the Twitch company. I have no idea how you can give those concerns, but you can feel free to pass them on to me, the streamer, on your behalf, and I will let our Bezos overlords know that this is pretty cool, especially when there are balloons involved. Naturally. P. Tracy, Cam about to work for Amazon in two of his jobs. Bro. Honestly, I'm just waiting for, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting for uh, Amazon to buy out this startup that I'm working out. We're getting pretty close. I think, actually, I think the Amazon meeting just happened. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Thank Jeff. Sims Jeff. I love this. I love doing this stuff. Thank you, sir. And you know what we're going to do with that? We would like to do loud noises. So I'm gonna take another bamboo skewer and I'm gonna pop the shit out of this. Here we go. It's gone. Wow, that was loud. Oh. It's okay. Hopefully nobody in my building thinks that was a gunshot because it wasn't. Not this time at least. They can buy me out next time. Next, give me Amazon shares. Dude, mm, that's the dream. That is the dream. Anyway, so enough talking about this cocktail. Um, what is it? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? It definitely looks pretty cool. Um, but like what else is there is is she all looks or does she have substance within trick question? She always has substance within it depends on how much substance though. Oh, also I have to take a picture of this absolute butte. I'm gonna turn it around 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 because I want to see that angle from my angle. That is so cool looking Yee Snip snap love that crack whap. I don't know anyway so it smells, ooh, okay. So it smells like cherry, and it also smells like that tea. So it smells like cherry tea. And to be honest, the tea itself kind of had like a cherry-ish kind of feel, cherry-ish kind of smell to it before. Although I don't think, honestly, I don't think that cherry characteristic comes through now that it's mixed with the chocolate and the, the cherry. I think the characteristic of the tea that come through now are my like more like those like rustic woody notes? Actually, I kind of take I kind of get something almost um almost sweet to it. It's not the cherry. It's something adjacent to cherry. Almost apple, apple and perish. Although to be perfectly honest, that might just be still the cherry. 
So let's just say it's it's all maraschino. It all smells like maraschino. Um, maraschino, maraschino, menamino, menabudu. Um, let's see how it smells. Oh, whoa, I, would t I already smelled it. You want me to smell it again? Whoa! Good shit, my dog. How does it taste, though? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that. All right. You know how I was saying before about it was, it was, um, it was that cocktail, that one right there. It had the chamomile, had the mint, had the honey. They were kind of at odds with each other. There's chocolate in there. There's cherry in there. And that tea is in there. And it's got enough sweetness added by the honey. It's it's smooth. Ooh. Oh, that is delectable. My god. I am so glad that we got here today. This was completely unplanned. This is really, really good. Wow, this is incredible. Yeah, so please allow me to get out of my orgasm zone for a moment. This is really good tasting. Wow, it is... It's just, I think it's just, honestly, I think there could be more tea. I think the tea could be more prevalent. So I think we could dial back on the sweetness. I think we could have dialed back even on the chocolate a little bit. Um, this is really, really good. It gels well together. It has that cherry. It's got that chocolate and it provides, it, that's, that's the other thing. The Ruby Oolong tea provides another angle that like I didn't think, I didn't know that cherry chocolate needed. And this is like, it's necessary. It's like, imagine for a moment that you walk in, this is, the, this is the way I'm gonna describe my thought process here. What it evokes is this image of walking into like a very cozy cottage, right? The fire's not on, the fire is just cindering. It's been on for a little while, the house is warm, you sit down, it's a cold winter's night. That's why the fireplace was going, but you're dying down for the evening. You had your hot cocoa, but you didn't finish all of it. Instead, it's kind of sitting there. It's not lukewarm anymore. It has completely come down to temperature. And what you're getting is like this, it's, it's comforting. It's like you're there with your hot cocoa, but you've also been, been drinking a little bit of sherry or port wine. It's just, it's such a relaxing vibe. It's, it's cold, I will say. Like, I can't think that kind of breaks it, but I guess that's kind of fitting for like the winter weather coming up. Ooh. Don't click me, Sean. Well, this is this is a very dangerous garnish here. This thing is almost poking my eye. Um, but wow, this is really, really good. I would say, to succinctly describe the flavor that I'm getting here, is cherry chocolate with something else. It's something else. What the flavor that lings around the most is that honey and that tea. The chocolate kind of dissipates. It kind of, it's a little creamy, so it kind of exists at the top of my mouth. But this is so... So, so cool. Wow. I feel like the most, the, the, the coolest things come in, like they, they come by in moments where you just don't least expect them. Or, you know, when you take the, the path less traveled by, we want to get like analogical here. Analog, that's probably not the right word. This is really, really cool. My, this is a, this is a good, this is, I think, I feel bad for the next cocktail that's coming up, but I think this is a winner tonight. This is supposed to be the red flower cocktail. Loose interpretation, it's not red. The cherry is red though. I'm cool with that. And that one was called, oh my God, let's repeat the recipe again. This is really, really good. Please this, please make this for yourself. This is awesome. We're calling it cherry berry, cherry berry chocolate. Cherry berry chocolate. Berry spelled bear, like a rah, that kind of thing. Not berry as in mm, raspberry, not that kind of berry. Cherry berry chocolate. It contains two ounces or 60 milliliters of red oolong oolong tea infused gin, or ruby oolong. Ruby Oolong Oolong Tea Infused Gin. I got mine from the Spice and Tea Exchange. Awesome. It's also got three quarters of an ounce of honey in there, or about 22 milliliters, maybe a little bit more, depending on the viscosity of your honey. We also have half an ounce or 15 milliliters of chocolate cream liqueur in there. I use Godiva, and also half an ounce or 15 milliliters of cherry brandy. It's Kirschwasser, Schlaterer is the brand. This is so cool. This is really, really good. My goodness, it's kind of separating a little bit because the cream might be like, the, there might be some chemistry stuff going on in there, but it is not unpleasant at all. That is really, really cool. Okay, all right, let's, 
it's nice to feel it's nice to feel euphoria, but we can't be there all the time because if we're there all the time, then surely we won't taste the um, we'll have nothing to compare it to. Life is all about contrast. Without contrast, there's no spice of life, you know. All right, I'm, I'm just turning this around just so it looks nice. There we go. How much space do we have? Do we have space for one more cocktail right here? We do. We totally do. And that'll be the last one. All right, so let's prepare for it. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning here. It'll probably take a minute or so, uh, so uh, bear with me. Life is a cabaret of chum. Chum bucket, chum trowels, chum truckloads. Um, but also a nice cocktail here and there. If life is the chum, then this is... Um, this is the one eyeball that remained in the process. The good little morsel, the good little ball, the little, good little pearl that lies within. Um, which probably sounds disgusting because it kind of is. Have you ever eaten an eyeball before? What, what kind of giblets have you consumed in your life? I've eaten quite a few giblets, to be perfectly honest. Um, I kind of, I'm a fan of like, um, like giblets and whatnot that you get like, you know, I think when you get like a chicken, they put the like giblets on a little bag on the inside. You can cook them up. I think I went to a friend's house one time and their whole thing was eating the giblets and cooking them up before the actual chicken was done. Or the turkey, I'm sorry. Um, not the, not the chicken, it was turkey. Um, and so that was, that was their whole, like, that was like their family thing. And it was, it's, it was great. It was absolutely awesome. Uh, I think I, I tried, I tried turkey heart for the first time. I tried turkey liver for the first time. I tried, oh, this is my chalk. That's my chalk rag. These things start to meld together when you, when you've had a few drinks. I really haven't had that much to drink. I, I haven't been drinking a lot of these. Um, mostly because I gotta, I gotta keep my watch here. Um, I'm trying to keep up on my water. Um, Lest I do something stupid and drunk like chug an egg and grapefruit juice like I did last week. Consumption. Oh, man. Which one do I get to pick? Oh, I'm going to go with the matcha one, actually. Uh, also, it gives me an excuse to put these little guys away. Consumption. It is the time. Pick a flower. Drink it. That's still pretty good. That's still pretty good. It's actually gotten it's gotten more bitter as it sits. So I think that's one of those ones that you might want to consume quicker. Otherwise, the flavor starts to change. And that's the thing, too. Every single one of these cocktails that have been sitting here, they've been sitting there, they're exposed to the air, they're oxidizing and stuff like that. And to be perfectly honest, like, eventually, eventually, they're going to taste a little bit different the longer you keep them sitting out. Per if I had my way perfectly... Um, this would be in smaller segments. I'd put them into containers. I'd put them away be able to have stuff uh, Elsewhere, uh, I'd be able to try them later down the line I plan on preserving all of these I don't think any of these cocktails are cocktails that I would consider throwing out They all taste pretty good. They all taste good. They'll taste pretty good. It's pretty all right That's my drink gotten more bitter as it sits. That's oh, that's good If you're if you're into the bitter stuff, I, I like I like bitter things. It's like a dry like for the matcha It's like a dry bitter. I like bitters that are a little more savory that are a little more I guess full-bodied This is like a very shallow dry bitter and if that's your kind of thing Matcha do that. It's gonna be great for you, but yeah, that's actually not so bad Also, a lot of the matcha has kind of like I'm not sure if you can see that from here But most of the matcha has kind of sat. It's kind of sit to the bottom um, I'll show you when we do the close-up on the next one over here uh, if, if y'all remind me because I'm going to forget if we don't um all right, let's do, let me relabel things over here. We're keeping things going. It's a running tally of what we've done. Um, we've had quite the journey so far. Uh, the red one. What was the red one? It was called Cherry Berry Chocolate. Bear because, um, chair because, ch chair because, chair bear because, honey. That's what it was all about. Matcha be chew, matcha be chew. Matcha do about bee stings. Ooh, excuse me. <coughs> We're making cocktails over here. Burps are natural. Let it out. Farts are natural. Burps are natural. Throwing up is more or less a natural process that your body evolved with. So let's not shame it. Although I don't plan on throwing up on camera. Um, if that happens, Godspeed to you all. I'm so sorry. Let's write that down. It was called Cherry Berry. It's, you're not going to be able to read this over here. I'll take a picture of it later. I promise. Cherry Berry. Bear is in rawr, not bear is in raspberry. Very berry chocolate. Chocolate. Oh man. Well y'all. 
Um, we're not quite done yet. There's only one more cocktail left. One more flower left in our little our little garden over here, I suppose. This has been a really, really fun one so far. I'd just like to take a moment to express my appreciation for everybody that's uh, that's here right now. And also for the people who appear afterwards. This video exists into the infinitum. And so that's why I never feel quite alone on these streams. Because I know for a fact that there will be people who exist here in the now. And there's also you who exist in the future way, way far down the line. So hello to you. Hi there. You are probably a wonderful person, and if you're not, I'm sure you're just on your journey, and that is totally okay. We make cocktails. We make mocktails, too. I try to do this every single Wednesday here on Twitch. I post things on Instagram as well. I plan on doing some stuff on TikTok. I'm getting better at it. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of a steep learning curve there. I just like doing this. It's just like, it's really, really cool, and I'm just glad that I have the opportunity to do this. I'm glad that we've gotten here. Um, yeah, it doesn't need to get deeper than that. I'm gonna, I don't need this Sharpie anymore. Bye, Sharpie. It doesn't need to get deeper than that. Thanks, y'all. Let's move on to the next cocktail. It's the pink flower. The pink flower, again, we've just kind of chosen flowers because, like, we just kind of loosely, we were like bees, and we got bears, so we're going to do different kinds of flowers. It was just kind of the theming of it all. It, uh, aside from that, the only flower thing, bee thing related is the fact that they all have honey in them. They're loosely inspired by bees' knees. But you know what? They say that art imitates life. And if this is art... There is something alive out there that we are imitating. So let's move on. The next cocktail that we have, the final one of the evening, is the Pink Flower. Uh, and it uses a particular gin that's been infusing in rose petals. I'll pull it out here. We've got rose petals. What have we got there? Cheer with... <gasps> Pop Dolores? What is going on here? Now I, now I need to go back and get my Sharpie marker. I thought it was over. And it's not over. And by the way, might I say, what an excellent emoji choice. It's a good one. I need to get another balloon. Oh man, this is fun. Oh. Nice. LOL. No, that's what that's what I get. No, that, that's what I get. I decided too early to throw the Sharpie marker onto the other side of the bar. So that was totally that was totally on me. Honestly, I deserve that. I need to get up moving every once in a while. <laughs> he did it again! It's Sims! It's Jeff! Now, are we talking like Sims and like simulations and stuff? Because if Jeff is the simulation, what does that make the rest of us? Maybe if he is the simulation, then in actuality, we are like Jeff's dream. Honestly, who knows? Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to pop this farther away from my ear than I did last time. Here we go with a pencil. Oh, my God. Okay, that was still quite annoying. This is kind of what I do. Eventually, I will realize that popping balloons on stream right near my ear is an unsustainable thing to do, and maybe then we'll stop. Anyway. Rose gin. Rose gin. This one actually, like, I was expecting this to get a lot more red, uh, but it actually wound up being kind of pink. Le more, like, less red than the ruby oolong did so i switched the colors around the, the other one was good this one was going to come first and that was going to be the red one but we didn't do that we switched things around we did it um but so this i got these rose petals also from the spice and chi exchange uh perfect roses defined as those that are ideally beautiful and the most aesthetically pleasing contained between 25 and 40 petals so this is this is probably the most beautiful gin that there is out there. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Um, it's aesthetically pleasing. My God, it can't get any better than this. This is the most aesthetically pleasing gin, and I've been teasing you with that for a little while. Oh yeah, welcome to the party, man, Muscle Man and Muscle Man Annie. Welcome, 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 welcome. I'll put a party hat on for you in just a moment. Um, it's metaphorically me putting it on your head as a way to say welcome to the party. I'm gonna zoom in on this little thing over here first. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's like, it's a lot more, it's pink. It's got a nice red color to it, and I kind of like that. Well, I'm gonna put a little light on it. See how that's looking? It's got a nice color to it, I think. How's that going through? Like, it's cool. It's a cool little color there. And that was also infusing overnight. It's been a, it's been a good one. Um, party time! Love that emote! I'm so glad I put that on there. If y'all have better emote ideas, I, I need ideas. Oh, and I was gonna say before, I was also gonna put a zoom onto the matcha cocktail. Um, can y'all see? Whoa, I kind of spilled it. I'm so sorry. Can you kind of see the matcha at the bottom? I'll put a little light on this too. It's just interesting that the matcha cocktail, it's, I guess it's not interesting, it's to be expected. There's a bunch of matcha that's collected at the bottom. It's kind of cool. It's kind of chill. It's also very bitter now, but that's, that's fine. We're, we're okay with that. Let's zoom back out. Y'all don't have to look at my chest. I, I promise. If anybody says, oh, 
the matcha thing. I got it on my fingers. I had to take it. If anybody says that like this should be like a like um like I'm doing partial nudity and stuff because I've got like a piece of my chest exposed, um, I guess you're entitled to your own opinion. But trust me, trust me, I could get much more naked and still be comfortable with it. So um, please take that as you will. We're gonna continue with the the rose infused gin. This one here, um, honestly, this was kind of my the la I wanted to do only five cocktails, and so I was planning on only doing five of the infusions, and so I was like, okay, but I can do another one, and that's where I kind of came to thought was like, oh, I have the, ru the ruby oolong, but also, and I was like, yo, you have the rose petals upstairs. What would that go well with? And I was like, that's a really good idea. What would rose go well with? I don't think I've ever had a rose cocktail or anything with rose in it. So I was like, oh my God, I gotta give this a try. And it's exactly why I bought the rose petals. I was like, I think the store that I bought them at was doing like a buy seven, get the eighth one free. And I was like, well, I gotta get something else. So what do I get? And I was like, I guess I'll get rose petals. I don't really know what to use this for, but like they must have a use. There must be something you can use rose petals for. You make a rose syrup, you make a rose infusion, something you gotta do with it. And uh, lo and behold, it's exactly what we have here. And so I'm happy with that. I uh, have to plug in my laptop over here. It's getting a little low on charge. E there we go. Charge. Thank you. It's my stream laptop. That's how I watch things going on here. Buy seven, get one free. That's not a bargain. Yeah, actually, it's funny. A year ago, they were doing buy six, get the seventh one free. And this year was buy seven, get the eighth one free. I was like, well, I guess we're living in hard times. Uh, but you go there and you don't just buy, I mean, you don't just buy one unless you do. Because the containers don't come any bigger than like this this bag here. Um, so if you're trying to stock up on tea, you're probably going to want more than one bag. I don't know if it's a business model that I necessarily agree with, but that's the place where I get my tea and stuff like that. So I'm stuck. I don't have a choice there. Buyers beware. I'll put this over here in front of the matcha so it has... The light that it deserves. Please don't fall over. Thank you so much, roses. I appreciate that. Um. So, so what does it smell like? I feel like I feel so far, it's been kind of unexpected whether or not like the gin infusion is gonna s smell more like the solute or the solvent, the whatever's inside of it, or the gin itself. And I'm actually kind of curious to see where we get with this. Hmm. This is actually a very happy medium. I would say it smells very very floral. Um. But it also smells like gin. To be perfectly honest, I'm not I'm not super good on what like what a rose smells like or like how to articulate specifically how a rose smelled as opposed to let's say a pansy or a peony or something like that. But it smells floral and um it smells like gin. So it smells like comedy. So someone could say it just smells like gin because a lot of the gins that I've had are very botanical, they're very floral, they're a little earthy, it's very it's an air to the nose and uh, it's a good smell. I suppose, says Sims Jeff, if you live in Vermont and it's below 15 degrees for a whole month, you need a pantry of supplies. This is very very true. It's very true. And you never know when rose petals might come in handy either for your drinks, either for your soaps or whether that means for other sorts of self body care. Maybe you're putting tiny little rose petals on the floor to welcome in your spouse or partner or a lovely friend who's coming over and they're like oh that's so cute you put really dried and crumpled roses on the ground that are now crackling beneath my toes that's that's so cute of you i'm, I'm really i'm feeling a certain way that you did that yeah you never know what you might need 15 below in vermont one never really knows <laughs> mr tracy says i have a lot of food but i mean heating and electricity is pretty good and stable that's good to hear because uh, i know the internet the cell connectivity up there is not exactly where my phone wants it to be but that's fine Rose, infused gin. The question came up when I was thinking things through last night is what do you mix roses with? What what, what flavor pairings go well with roses? To fa the fact that you're trying to mix flavors with rose is honestly not that far out there, um, according to Google. Uh, I guess when you compare it to what goes well with ruby oolong tea um, and matcha, uh, that isn't in a matcha latte that you bought from Starbucks for a price that is way too much. Um, so we did a little bit of research. And the research that we found was that roses go really well, uh, suppose according to the internet, with fruits such as raspberry or pomegranates or even chocolate as well. Now specifically when, you know, when we looked at the ruby oolong, it said keiko specifically, keiko, which means that in uh, what I was thinking is that instead of being, it's like chocolate is a little more sugary, keiko is like that raw unfiltered like cocoa powder and stuff. And so if something tastes more like chocolate, I take that more as to taste like, it's probably gonna taste more like a Hershey's chocolate bar or like a little bit of syrup or something like that. Something that you like, it has sugar in it. If it says keiko, it's probably gonna be something, at least what I would assume, something that's a little more dry. It's a bit more bitter. It's more baking chocolate, something a little different. And so the internet damn said chocolate. So I was thinking of something a little more sweet. 
Um, although I'd use the chocolate cream on the other, the chocolate cream liqueur on the other one. I don't think I'm going to keep with that, to be perfectly honest. I am going to keep with creme de cake on this one, which does make an appearance. But in addition, I was also very curious about the pomegranate aspect of it, that red fruit aspect. And I was like, you know, what do we have that's pomegranate in the collection? And I have, I've got some grenadine. I've got plenty of grenadine. I think I made it like a, a little while ago. That, or it's the batch from last time, in which case it's still grenadine. So whatever it may be. <laughs> Sims Jeff says, looks at potpourri, wonders, hmm, what can I pair to drink with this thing? On, honestly, I was, <laughs> I was literally just talking with one of my uh, one of my acquaintances the other day, and I was like, "Do you know what potpourri is?" And she was like, "No, what is potpourri?" And I was like, "Well, we have a mutual French friend," and I was like, "You should definitely ask our French friend." Potpourri is that stuff that you put in your bathroom next to your toilet that's supposed to, on average, make your bathroom smell better or different areas of your house. And I just I would describe the potpourri, at least in my experience, as something along the lines of like, so like you get the potpourri to make your bathroom smell nice. However, your bathroom smells like shit doo-doo and urine so you put the potpourri next to your toilet on average the smells emitting from the front half of your toilet combining with the taff from the back part of your toilet from the potpourri combine together and kind of cancel each other out your bathroom kind of smells all right it's it can smell sometimes overpoweringly good if you use a little bit of like air freshener there as well um but for the most part it's gonna be it's gonna be all right and so that's another part of it too because the front half of your toilet smells terrible and the back half of your toilet smells okay if you're a person like me where you can kind of do your business facing the toilet standing up if you ever find that the odor that you were creating is too much for you all you need to do is bend over to the back of your toilet and smell the potpourri instead then as you're doing your business you can get a nice smell of cinnamon clove and stuff like that as you are you know voiding your excretory system in one way or another so um I'm sorry to put that image into your head. Let's make a cocktail, shall we? It's a rose-based one. So just like the ones that we've done previously, we are going to need two ounces of whatever infused gin that we have. Two ounces or 60 milliliters. In this case, it's two ounces of rose-infused gin. So let's put that into our cocktail shaker. Here we go, here we go, here we go. It's rose, it's rose-infused. It's, it's got such a lovely color to it. Um, oh, you know what? I just realized I didn't taste it. I want to know what this tastes like, damn it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a taste. Smell that. P. Tracy says, Minecraft Live 2022. Looking more promising than the past ones. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Crypt Crepes 811. Can you make a USB port? That's a good one. I like that. I'm a technological person. I love technology. I work with electronics on a daily basis. That's so, that is so good. I'm writing that down. You... S B port. Ha! I love that. And by that we mean universal serial B port. The universal serial B port. Uh, what are you putting in that port? I don't want to know. Hopefully it's not your stinger. United States of B. United States. Well, there's no B in the United States. All right. Although the B United Bates. The Bunited Batates, the Bunited Butanes of Bamerica. This one's for Bamerica. Rose infused gin. What does it taste like? All right, hold on. That's a really deep container. I need to put that into something else. Hold on. That is a really, really deep container, and I can't get a proper sniff of that. There we go. We'll put that in there. It smells like rose, but we knew that already. yeah it tastes like it tastes like rose it actually is it is also just like the previous one it tastes like it's a it, just like i had mentioned on the, the the odor of it all it smells like gin uh but it also but it also kind of tastes like gin in the sense that gin, gin itself has a bunch of different florals and botanicals that can be added to it usually proprietary some people are honest about that stuff i'm being honest here this had rose petals in it um and so it just kind of still tastes like gin it just tastes like gin like the gin that i had that we made it with which was irvine's gin american dry this was the gin that we used um except now it's got a different it's got a different botanical angle to it instead of having whatever it had in it before probably juniper probably other stuff not honestly sure it also has an angle of rose to it um so yeah there was that let's continue we have two ounces of our um our infused gin in there which actually this is this is lovely 
Now that the, the alcoholness of the gin is going away, I'm left with the very, very pleasant floral notes of the rose, which kind of sticks around, which is really, really good. Excuse me. The uh, lemon from earlier is still activating the acid reflux that I have in my body. Um, it's not your fault. It's totally my fault. It's just how it is. Um, we also need... Oh, uh, we're continuing with the rest of the drink, right? We also need honey, naturally. We've been doing this... Uh, we've done this six times now, and this is the sixth time. And I continue to forget where we're at with things. Flip it over. We're going to add three quarters of an ounce, about 22 milliliters, give or take maybe four-ish milliliters because it's sticky and it sticks around. So I add a little bit more to kind of make up for the fact that, you know, um, not all honeys are made equal. And this one certainly isn't. The next ingredients that we're going to need in that uh, as we continue forward is we were talking before how it goes well with pomegranate. It goes well with raspberry. The only raspberry thing that I have is a sour raspberry, and I'm not a big fan of sour raspberry. It could very well go in a different direction that maybe you're into if you're really into sour drinks. I personally, not so much. Um, but if that's kind of your thing, this is why I mentioned it. You can take anything you have here and sub it out with different recommendations. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I can't see the liquid. It's camouflaged in your shirt. Oh, my God. Wait, 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 I have something for this. I have something for this. Eat. I have the white paper background of pleasantry. There we go. Is that better? Is this doing it well? <laughs> Is this doing things for you? <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm so glad that somebody mentioned the white paper. It was Anna. It was my, it was my dearest who mentioned the white paper. I'm so sorry. My shirt was working against me today. I thought the flowers Well, I mean, I guess technically there's a lot of creatures in nature that rely on flower camouflage in order to like survive, you know? I was just trying to emulate nature. Art imitates life. The life is nature. We need grenadine. Oh, I put, I keep putting too much honey in there. This is supposed to be only three quarters of an ounce of honey. Eh, whatever. I guess I kind of changed the recipe a little bit. That's fine. We're gonna add half an ounce of grenadine. Which I'm gonna pull out of my fridge down here. Whoa, don't kill things, Cammy, please. Where's my grenadine at? Where is my grenadine? I thought I had grenadine in here. Oh, duh. it's literally right there. I'm blind. It was literally right on the door. Plan B. You always got to go with plan B. Yeah, well, you know. You make a mistake here or there. It's just like improv. When you make a mistake, roll with it. Or stop and realize where you are and, and change change course, change direction. Uh, this grenadine uses, I think it's got pomegranate juice, pomegranate molasses, and a little bit of orange blossom water in it. The exact proportions are something that I don't quite remember anymore, but it's really, really good, and I like the recipe. I got it from a, I got the recipe from a show called How to Drink on YouTube. I love that guy. Um, so we need about half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of grenadine. Um, if you use like a rose's grenadine, it's probably going to be a little more cherry flavored, like a cherry Coke. Uh, mine's more pomegranate-y, so that's why I'm subbing this in as the pomegranate flavor. Yours could be different. That's cool. Everybody's different. Embrace your uniqueness. And if you're not embracing your uniqueness and you feel comfortable with that, that's your uniqueness. That's cool. I gotta put this back in my fridge, otherwise they'll stay out and I'll forget about it, which is not a very good thing. It gets stored beneath my pineapple juice, which sits behind it. There we go. Taking a little bit of time down there. Really taking my time down there below the bar. Um, and then we also need, we have the pot, we have the grenadine, we have the honey, we have the gin. We need, I'm blanking. Oh, creme de caco. It was the chocolate park of it. There we go. I got some creme de caco down here. It's Jaquins or Joaquin's. I'm honestly not so sure. I've heard it both ways. We'll take half an ounce of that um, or 15 milliliters and pour that into our glass as well. So the thing with this one, every single spirit that is going into this one, every single one is sugar based. So I think this one is going to be really, really sweet. Um, perhaps unpleasantly. I'm not exactly sure. This one feels like, because of all the sweetness that's, the sweetness that's going on there, like, if I had to do something more chocolatey, I wish that it was less sugary. Uh, more cacao as opposed to more chocolate. If I had to do something pomegranate-y, I wish I had, like, a pomegranate, like, liqueur as opposed to a pomegranate syrup. Just because I don't really have that stuff on me, and I know they exist out there. But if I had, I, I predict it's going to be overpowering to the rose, and I think it's going to be too sweet. Um, although... You know, different people, different strokes, different folks. Everybody has their preferences and stuff. So we'll actually, I'm going to be in my, as honest an opinion as I can to see where we land with this one because it very well might be up your alley. And if it is, great, take it, run with it. It's yours. Set it free. If it comes back, it's really yours or however that saying goes. If you love something, let it go. If it flies back, it's yours. 
And isn't that sweet? And we're using rose infused gin. And roses are beautiful. Just like you. Just like these cocktails. They're a little grungy on the outside, but beautiful on the inside. I need some ice. Oh, that's still got liquid in it. Nope. Nasty. All right, let's go for it. That was, this is the pink flower. The name of this cocktail, which I haven't shared yet. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. I don't really feel like sharing it yet. You gotta wait till the end for that one. I can be such a tease sometimes. We'll use one large ice cube and then we will also use a small ice cube. If I can get it out of here. This is the, this is the last big ice cube that I have in this container. This is the last one, it's totally empty. Awesome. That's so cool. I'm gonna keep that actually in the freezer. Um, and I, I'm also at, almost also out of small ice cubes too. So, uh, all right. I've only got three left of those ones. I didn't use any of my Mickey ices or my spherical ice cubes because I just didn't need them. And that's totally fine. All righty then, let's do some shaking. Pour it all inside. We're gonna shake this one real good because it's got honey in it, just like the last few ones. It's cool. It's all right. It's chill. Let's give it a shake. Shake it up, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. Shake it up. Oh, I don't know any other words to put in here. Shake it up, bake it up, wake it up, crake it up, make it up, make it up, shake it up. Hey, get up. Yeah. When my rapping career takes off and my poetry career as well at the same exact time, we'll be in touch. Oh my god. Roses are red, violets are blue. This poem is free, but my internet bill is 62. <laughs> oh my god. My internet bill, I think, is $60 a month as well, so I'm totally with you there. Here we go again. My god, this is so cool. I, I love any excuse to blow up balloons. I only had to walk off camera, not because, not because the Sharpie is missing, he says, unsure of himself, because the Sharpie is now missing again. What the hell am I doing back here, Cam? Come on, dude. Oh, that's okay. Oh, no, 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 no. I found a black one, and we all know about that. That's so cool. Thank you so much for that, Bars for Days. Cheers. Internet cheap for now, for these, for these days. It's so cool. Oh, my God. You are a wonderful person, and I'm gonna take all of this and buy liquor with it. This is finally my excuse to go buy some really cool things. I was actually, I was just sharing with my fiance the other day. I have a birthday coming up. And I feel like I'm not the kind of person to buy things for myself because I like I feel like I need a reason to buy things either for somebody else or with like you know the cash that you get from like your grandparents and stuff. And so I was like, man, you know what I really, really want? Like, I feel like I, I, I'm on a couple of different cocktail websites. One of them is Crafted Pour. One of them is Curiata. One of them is Fine Wine and Good Spirits. This whole cocktail thing is something that I'm very, very enthused about. And I see all these really, really weird liqueurs that pop up every once in a while. And I'm like, man, I really, really want to get that. Like, there's a, the liqueur out there called Italicus. And I think it's a bergamot liqueur that I've always wanted to try because I don't know what uh, bergamot tastes like. Um, there's also Mr. Black is an absolute excellent excellent coffee liqueur i actually have a bottle of it down here it's this guy and it has they've got an amaro based one. Oh, they've got i got an amaro based one they've got a mezcal based one they've got uh, i think a rum based one a single barrel one i don't know it's so cool and i'm like man i would love to have that but like i don't need another coffee liqueur i don't need to get a big bergamot liqueur because no cocktail recipe i have has that but like damn it it'd be so good to have and it's things like this which i am super appreciated for because now i have an excuse to go out and buy those things and be able to crave that something freaking awesome over here so thank you for that i really appreciate it what are we saying over here Shit, me and Cameron the same, bro. I can't buy myself gifts. Shit making me get turned on. Lol, sounds nice. I, oh my god. Ooh, I love that. Um, I've been popping every single balloon that we make on here. Um, so I'm gonna do it again. Uh, but this time, I'm gonna, f I'm gonna use a knife. Because that's what I have. And I'm gonna put it below the bar. And I'm gonna see if that's better on my ears. Believe me when I say it, it's actually between my legs. That took a couple tries, actually. And come to think of it, 
I really would not recommend anybody taking a knife and stabbing it between their legs because I realize how close to a very unfulfilling life that I just came right there. Um, so uh, don't do that. <laughs> Leave it to the professionals. Um, the professionals who are def drinking alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, leave it to us. <laughs> Aggressive. Oh my god. Every Christmas, Paul Tracy awaits for the most thoughtful gift ever, and then you get a freaking t-shirt. A fucking t-shirt. I'll admit, as I've gotten older, I want socks. Like, I'm a 24-year-old man who sounds like he's probably in his mid-50s or whatever, but like, when somebody gets me socks, I'm just like, all right, I get to put these on my feet. And I'm like, I am genuinely happy by that. It brings me the good serotonin when I get socks that I unwrap. When I see that wrapped up container and I'm like, oh my God, it looks like an oblong cylinder with rounded at the end. What could it possibly be? I'm like, yes, I get to put these on my feet at night. And sometimes in bed, cause I'm a heathen. Cause I like to stay warm. I give Cameron funny socks every single year and I love it. And so that's the thing. Well, now that's the moral question. Like, do I spend do I spend this stuff on socks or do I put it on cocktails? No, cocktails. We put it on cocktails. That's what we're here for. It's for the show. Oh, uh, I need a glass. Which glass? This one. That one. We we'll use this one. I require the sacrificial yoga block. Here's one. Here's one yoga block. Um, I'm just gonna use the one. I don't really need it. It's Christmas tradition. Do you like his toes? I like my toes. I'm really glad that I have them. They help me balance. I need to zoom on in this cocktail here. We're gonna zoom in on the glass. That's what we're doing. We're zooming in on this glass down here. Just just hold your horses, we'll get there. Take a look at this glass, right here. Take a look at that. We've zoomed in on it. Isn't that beautiful? What a nice little glass there. You know, it's really cool. Like, the reason why I wanted to do this whole zoom thing is because when this, like, like I don't know what you're watching this on, but if you're on like a TV or something, like, I think this looks really good. Um, my computer can't handle any other higher definition, and that would also require quite an investment, but we're getting there. It's all on the list. And like, I just think this looks freaking cool. Like, I freaking love this. Also, I can put my face up here, and y'all are like, what is he doing? He's not doing anything at all. Let's strain what we've called, what do we call this one? Oh, I didn't share the name yet. It's called the Redwood Truffle. Why? Because, um, I don't know. The Redwood Truffle? I don't know. I feel like I should name it something more rosy. Um, I'm trying to think. What is a, what is a roan? Uh, what is what is rosy? What do you got there? What is rosy there? I got dried blood. Declines answering. I like dried blood. What is Paul Tracy talking about? Blue black under your entire big toenail. Oh, it's going to stay like that for a little while. Oh, what's this? Crove's put some love in Chad? Oh, Right back at you, Crove. I appreciate that. You're welcome here. Oh! I lost my train of thought. It completely derailed. What was I doing? Oh, we're making a cocktail. That's what we're doing. Cool. <laughs> Duh. I should have remembered. Strain more of that in there. It's actually quite. It's got a nice red color there. Oh, let's do the let's do the light treatment. How does it look? What's the light treatment giving it? Ooh. Kind of like that. Hey. Hey, that's pretty good. Kind of like that. I think I like it better without the light. That's actually a nice. It's a pretty nice color, if I'm being honest. It's pretty good. We were zooming closer on your chest. Oh my god. Oh jeez. Um, and we need to garnish this with something. Um, I was trying to think. Um, in my in my collection in my notes, I was saying that we we're gonna garnish this with some grated chocolate. But to be perfectly honest, I don't think that this calls for grated chocolate. I think it calls calls for rose petals. So we're gonna take some of these rose petals that we still got. We're gonna we're gonna put some uh, we're gonna put some rose petals on it. So let's go for it. I'm just gonna sprinkle it. We're gonna go f absolute full ham on this. <laughs> and I'll go <laughs> and I will go <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to decorate the sacrificial altar, the sacrificial cocktail altar with more rose petals. Haha! <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm gonna take a picture of my sacrificial altar. That's gonna be it's gonna be is. You're not gonna great grain my chocolate. Oh my god, I zoomed out way too far. <laughs> uh, Disney Queen, uh, we've been together for more than eight years now. No, I am not going to grain your chocolate. Um, not right now, at least. Not while the camera is rolling. Please, contain yourself, dear. We try to keep ourselves to the utmost level of respect around here and dignity. Hey, that's so beautiful. Oh my god, it's a, it's a nice cocktail. Great. I'm going to take a picture of it. Ooh. 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 Ah, ah, ah. 
I like that. This one is called, I call it the Redwood Truffle, but the, the Redwood Truffle just doesn't, just, just doesn't, I, I call it the Redwood Truffle, but like, I don't really think, that doesn't feel right anymore. I don't know why I call it the Redwood Truffle. I think I was just trying to think of something that was red, but that was when this was still called the Red Flower. I called this, I changed this one to be the Pink Flower. Oh man, we need a different name for it. What do we, what do we want to call it? Um, it's, ro it's Rose. And it's chocolate. Actually, I have literally no. I mean, let's, let's decide a name on it after I actually give it a sniff and take a sip of it. To be perfectly honest, I don't. I don't exactly know what we want to call it yet. Let's let's hold on that. We'll get there. We will get there. All right. So what does it smell like? Woo! That is very rosy. Rosy, rosy, rosy. What do you mean? What happened to that one? What are you talking about? It crystallized? No, it's probably the. Whoa. Oh, it's the cream curdling. Sweet. Y'all yeah. want to see cr uh, curdled chocolate liqueur? It's actually kind of cool looking. This is what I get coffee. Yeah, congrats. You saw, you, you pointed out the weird one. This was the uh, cherry berry chocolate. Uh, it still tastes great. It's just a little, it's just kind of, um. there's some particulates floating in it now. Honestly, I think it tastes more like, I think it's even more like chocolate now that I think about it, that it's been sitting there. And it's got this disgusted look on her face. It's so gross. It's delicious. You should try it. I don't like chocolate with my cherries. That's okay. It's a perfect drink, and some people don't understand perfection. I you are one of those people. Like it's uh, it's actually you know what that that's fine. That's fine. And and by the way, perfect. Uh, actually, these rose petals are perfect according to the spice and tea exchange. It says perfect, perfect roses. This is also a perfect cocktail. Oh, that one looks great. There are various different types of perfect out there, just like there are various different types of infinity in mathematics and applied oh, mathematics. You want to try the rose one? I haven't even tried it yet. It's rude. You do that? Okay, okay. It smells like roses. That's pretty much all I've gotten so far. That's okay. You don't have to be on camera. Whatever you're most comfortable with. Smells like green. It smells like green. All right. I would call that rose or flowery. Probably. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. It's whatever you want it to be, really. Your experience is totally valid. Call it rose petal to the metal. We'll see how intense it is. If it's intense, I'm down with that. So what do you think, dear? Is it intense? Does it really put the petal to the metal? It's like an odd mix of a bitter tea. Bitter tea? Like an herbal tea. Interesting. And you say that with a bunch of gin and other sweet liqueurs in it. Yeah. It definitely smells like roses. I will give it that. I, I hope I don't suck sweet. up one of the... It's definitely not sweet. It's not sweet? It's not sweet. There's a bunch of sweetness in it. It doesn't taste sweet. Let's see. It might be the gin. I really hate gin, and I forgot that. Huh. That's <laughs> Of that. That's really good. Wow, that's actually really good. To my palate, it is definitely sweet. I will say that. I taste the grenadine and the honey most prominently out of all of that. Remember, all, all the sugary things that we have here, we have grenadine there, it's a sugar syrup. We have creme de caco, it's a sugar liqueur. A, we got honey in there, it's honey, honey from a bee's mouth. Um, and we also have the gin, which doesn't have any sugar in it, except for like I guess whatever natural sugars appear in the in the rose petals. But this is really really good. It's like it's hitting it's hitting that like I don't think it's as balanced. No 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 it is balanced. This is a very balanced combination. It's like the sweetness is all kind of meld together. The flavor of the rose really complements that of the grenadine. I'm totally honest when I say that. And like the chocolate, it's actually not that prominently chocolatey. I think it really, it does a really good job of kind of, kind of pushing the narrative of like, like if this particular cocktail were a narrative, the front of the book says roses. And somewhere in that book, it's less about roses, but more about like, let's say like a trek through like a trek through a small town you pass by the confectionery you pass by a garden you pass by a church and this is kind of what that feels oh you also pass by a funeral home because roses to me are very they're very funeral homey to me but it's nice that's pretty good that's really really good little red riding hood hmm I'm trying to think of like that's giving me nursery rhyme vibes what nursery rhymes mention roses roses okay the only nursery rhyme that reminds me of roses is the one about the black plague um ring around the rosy ring around the rosy okay hold on we can work with that ring around the rosy ring around the rosy pocket full of pocket <laughs> ring around the rosy pocket full of bees i've got a pocket full of bees here i think ring around the rosy actually strikes me that that feels very fitting for this because i'm imagining that like what, what is evoking this idea of like a small town that you're walking through what if the town is in the dark ages and is being completely eviscerated by the black plague 
pocket full of pocket full of posy pocket full of sunshine rose in your mouth that's really good i would say it's very very sweet but like i think what i get in the back is the chocolate what i get in the front is the grenadine and the grenadine has such a nice it's got a poignant sweetness to it if that makes sense the pomegranate has like a very noticeable almost raspberry like quality to it because of just how like a little, it's got a little bit of tartness to it and i think that really really pairs well, pairs well with the rose i will say i will say my criticism is that i think it could be more rose forward although i do have the rose i, I get the rose right in the front but it kind of it's not the first thing that i get it's something lower and hold on one second dearest kolioko is squeaking there, your Kolioko is squeaking, and I can hear it very clearly. Sorry. It's okay. I just wanted to make sure that you know, because I it's very, very clear for me. I'm not sure if anybody heard squeaking from downstairs. Anna's watching some Kolioko. Great show, by the way. Excellent show. And she's also working on cosplay stuff. Then I'm very sure I am very slowly drinking rose petals. Did I take a picture of this one? Let me just double check to make sure that I have a picture of all these cocktails here, because I want to make sure I want to make sure that I do, because uh, these are all going. These are all beautiful. These are all going on Instagram afterwards. Yes, we do. We got one, two, three, four, five, and six. I like that. This is great. Fruity petals. Fruity petals. That's also a good one. I kind of like that. I like that too. I, I'm, I'm between ring around the rosy and fruity petals. Fruity petals. You know what? I feel like fruity, the fruity petals. Okay, let's get out of my head for a second. It looks like it's got petals on it and it tastes fruity. We call it how it is. Honestly, I dig that. I'm going to take that one. Sims Jeff, I'm um, taking that. I'm going to take that. You get the credit for that one, though. That was cool. We're going to call this one fruity petals. I like that. We we're we're kind of... It was better, It was definitely better than redwood truffle. Just redwood truffle just didn't... Just, it just didn't do it for us, I don't think. Also, if you happen to suck up a rose petal, it's actually not that bad, to be perfectly honest. All right, let me put this on one last coaster. And I'm going to put it to the side. I'm going to put it to the side. Right over here. Right next to the other cocktail that we made. Is that off screen? It is not off screen. Perfect. I'm glad to know about that. Um, let me do a little cleanup around here. And then we'll do some, we'll do some ending. Just a little bit of cleanup. I'm not quite ready to leave yet. This has been a really, really fun one. I'm really happy that y'all were here for this. Thank you for that. It's been an honor. It's been an honor to have you all along for the ride. I can't wait to do all of my cocktail cleaning after this. That's what happens after these streams are over. There's just a bunch of cleaning that happens, and I'm gonna need um, a couple different containers to put these um, to put all these wonderful, wonderful cocktails in. Um, look forward to it in a way. Um, that's gonna be pretty fun. This has been really, really fun so far. So what we covered tonight? Oh wait, wait, wait! I need to write the other one on the board. Not that anybody can see it. I think it's a little too low. Um, but let's put it on the board. It's for the sake of record keeping. We like to keep records. Otherwise, people forget about what we do. And how else are we going to rem be remembered ad infinitum without leaving our mark on the world behind us? It's just kind of a... Sounds like it'd be fun. Sounds like it'd be pretty fun leaving our mark on the world. This one is because called Fruity Petals. And Fruity Petals was made with two ounces or 60 milliliters of rose-infused gin, a half an ounce or 15 milliliters of creme de caco, a half an ounce or 15 milliliters of grenadine, whatever recipe you have. You can use a cherry one. I use the pomegranate one. I think it works pretty well here. And three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of honey, raw, unfiltered. That's just the kind that we have here. And it was lovely. It was absolutely lovely. Oh, please don't spill over. Rose-infused... In, uh, rose Jen, you're, you're a nice one. I like that. Fruity. Fruity petals. That's a very clever one, too. This is why we like this is why I like to crowdsource it from. I'm a big fan of open source work out there. I like to crowdsource information. It's just like it, it's helpful because we come up with the wo most wonderful things. When a bunch of minds come together and just mind meld. Excuse me. It's an amazing, amazing thing. We made six cocktails this evening, and I will just very quickly go over all of them once again for people who may be popping in towards the end. No worries, though. If you're into social media and stuff like that, I've got a couple of them. They will all appear on our Instagram. I will put them up on... Um, there's a website called Crafted Pour out there. There's no links anywhere for that, but it's, it's just a website that exists. And, uh, of course, all of these streams get archived anyway on YouTube. If you miss those things, if you want to make sure you see the stuff from the past, you can subscribe to that YouTube channel. 
if you want to. Just saying it for your reference. Not saying that you need to. If you like this kind of stuff, I do this stuff every single Wednesday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This was kind of a long one. We usually do like one or two cocktails, and depending on how we're feeling, it might just be one and we call it then. Uh, but it's fun. And I also do games on Monday if that's more your thing too. It doesn't have to be, but it's all right. Um, but I will put everything as a, a video like link, link in recipes in description and whatever whatever have you um so if you, if you missed something totally okay but i'm gonna repeat it right now for everybody's reference because even if you come in late that's okay you shouldn't be gypped of the experience that was you shouldn't be um you shouldn't be remo removed from the experience sorry i don't like the word gypped it's not a fun word for me um so the first cocktail that we made over here was what we're calling the blue flower it was created using two ounces uh, or 60 milliliters of butterfly pea flower infused gin it looks kind of purple it's really cool three quarters of an ounce and by the way i'm just gonna i'm gonna skip all them like three quarters of an ounce 22 milliliters of honey was used in every single one of these and two ounces of a gin infused something a something infused gin was also used so i'm gonna kind of gloss over those um but for the first one use the butterfly pea flower gin the honey and three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of blue curacao uh that one was called bear and the bee blue flower the second one was just a purple bee's knees it's just the bee's knees but we used the the butterfly pea infused gin as well which contains also three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice three quarters of an ounce of that honey and you garnish it with a lemon twist there the first one was garnished with butterfly pea flower petals if you have them uh i made my gin with it so i had a few left over actually an entire bag left over there's at least the hundreds in there it's great it's wonderful and the third that one that we made is what we're calling uh matcha do matcha do about bee stings matcha do about bee stings it uses matcha two ounces of that matcha infused gin three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of amaretto the honey and you garnish that with a bit of matcha powder on top this one noticeably had like a crema at the top which is something that i really wasn't expecting it also goes really really well um the cocktail combination together it's 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 dry it's bitter but it's got a sweetness to it that kind of kind of creeps up on you it's a nice one this fourth one over here <coughs> excuse me um <coughs> excuse me again our yellow flower was called air beneath my wings it was a chamomile infused gin with three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of mint or mojito liqueur i had a mojito flavored liqueur it's got some mint in it it's got some lime to it it's also uh you could use creme de menthe or anything like that probably and you can get away with it um that was a, a nice one and you garnished it with a mint sprig that i pulled off my plant over on the window over there sims jeff says matcha matcha man i've gotta be a matcha 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 man I've got to be a matcha man. I'm not much of a matcha man. The uh, the matcha lattes at Starbucks just don't do it for me, to be perfectly honest. The fifth drink that we created, which was the uh, the red flower of the bunch, uh, is something called cherry berry chocolate, and it was created with two ounces of ruby oolong tea infused gin. It's a very it's nice. It's very. It's hazelnutty. It's cherry y. It's chocolatey, uh, according to the description of the tea bag. Um, it was also you. We also put into it. Oh my god! What else did we put into it? I gotta remember. Um, we put three quarters of an ounce of that honey. We put a half an ounce of Kirschwasser or Kirschwasser or cherry brandy, and half an ounce or fifteen milliliters of chocolate cream liqueur. I had a Godiva one, not the white chocolate, not the dark chocolate, the regular chocolate. Excuse me. That falls somewhere in between. And then the final cocktail, the one that we just did, is called Fruity Petals. Petals, as in ro rose petals. Excuse me, I'm very burpy. I've been drinking cocktails. And that was created with two ounces of rose-infused gin, half an ounce of grenadine, half an ounce or 15 milliliters, uh, three quarters of an ounce of the honey, and half an ounce or 15 milliliters of creme de caco. It was garnished with just a bunch of rose petals because I think it looked very, very pretty. Um, I would recommend all of them. I think the bee's knees probably could do with better proportions, at least for me. I'm not a big fan of sour stuff, um, so I think that has some room for improvement. The first butterfly one was pretty good. It was all right. And then progressively i think the cocktails got more and more complex and more and more satisfying this one here is kind of weird mint and matcha is a very interesting combination that i just did not see coming but it was it was pretty good all things considered in any case that's what i have prepared for this evening and i'm very very glad that we were able to go through that oh look a, t a twitch uh, a twitch clip just appeared in chat thanks dearest I wish, like, there was a way for me to, like, because, like, when those links appear, like, the chat over here just looks like a random link. Like, there's no context for that. I wish I had, there's probably a way to bot, like, to have the bot take a look at what that is and, like, give some more context on it. It's something to put on the various list of improvements and whatnot. In any case, that, 
that's all I've got for you lovely, lovely people out there this evening. We made six cocktails. It's been about three and a half hours. And if I had to pick a favorite amongst them, I gotta go with the cherry berry chocolate. That was a combination that we pretty much came up with on the fly. It came out of nowhere and it's just, ooh. Ooh, it was so, so good. I will say the rose, the uh, Fruity Petals one was also kind of like, I was not expecting it to be pretty good, but those last two are absolutely wonderful. Um, that's all I got. That's all I got for this evening. I gotta go get myself some sleep. It's like 11.30 p.m. over here. Uh, the, sun, the sun is, I gotta get up for work in the morning. Uh, my morning meetings as always, I get very, I get up very early for work, but that's okay. That's, that's my business. I don't need to bog you down with that. That's all I've got. If y'all are a fan of cocktails and stuff, I really, really like cocktails. I continue to do these things every single week. And this is where I'm going to end it for this evening. So you lovely people, here comes the end screen. You know what happens. You know what the, which end screen now? This one. This is the end screen that we had. It's farther away than the other one. Um, sometimes we forget. But um, that was it. This was right. <laughs> night, night, Sims, Jeff. Night, night, everybody. For whoever is out there, whether it is the whether the moon is shining where you are, just like it is around me, I hope you have a wonderful night. If the sun is shining where you are and you are getting up in the morning, I saw at least one reference in the new, newest She-Hulk episode where she took a shot of something in the morning, uh, which was kind of funny. And I was like, huh, that's a vibe. So if it's the morning where you are and you are already starting your alcoholic journey, that's cool. Go for it. Um, other than that, no matter what time zone that you're in, if it's the afternoon, have a great afternoon. If it's a good evening, that's pretty good too. Enjoy it. Enjoy your life. And uh, hopefully you see you next time. Maybe next week. Perhaps not. Perhaps not ever. And that's okay too. Have a wonderful rest of your life. I'll miss you. Bye, everybody.